Woo! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Shooting the Shell Season 3, Episode 12. It's God bless America. Oh, gosh. Today's a very special day. Um, before we get into welcoming our guests and everything, today's a very special day because three years ago today, St. Patrick's Day 2021, I received my first Mythic Legion in hand uh, after ordering on eBay because I missed it on a uh, big bad toy store. And that is Thistlethorn, who's sitting directly above me about three feet up. So hmm. <clears throat> very cool. It's, it's a very, very special day for me. So happy anniversary. Uh, Thank you very much. And it took me a long time to find the cabal and get involved, and that's all thanks to Sean taking me to Legion's Con 21 and hmm. all that jazz. But uh, so we have him to blame. Yes, it's it's your it's it's Sean's fault that you're you're stuck here on the show with me. Yeah, I mean, whole butterfly effect and all that. Like, if Sean doesn't take you to Legion's Con, I may not be wearing this hat today. Don't put that fatalistic nonsense on me <laughs> so wait, we got a lot of folks out here in chat world curtis yes we do let me let me and get that up while you're doing that just we're we're both recovering from a whirlwind trip to muskegon michigan uh which is what we're going to be talking about tonight on the show yeah um, amazing things like salt piles um so we got Rygon out there. We've got Dave working. A couple members of the My Wife is More Popular Than Me support group. Uh, Rob Zamora, David Smith, uh, William Harris, uh, Hol Wholesome Warlock, Chris Johnson. Great seeing you, Chris. Um, Jose Sanchez, uh, Kent Pool Collects, Tanya McCoy. We've got uh, Toy Locos channel. Heard they had a good show tonight. I was not able to catch it. Had a long trip back, and then I had to get a nap. Otherwise, I was not going to be able to make it here. Um, Joe C. That works because I'm Kid Rock, so that that works out well. Uh, we got J Max seventy seven. Mark Rivera. Mark, you need to reach out to me. You want a cape on Legion's Ladies? You haven't sent me your your address yet. I gotta have your address so I can get that mailed out. So. Uh, Jacob Forna, uh, Steve O'Bag, Minion24, Patrick Boyle, 2112, Joe Gonzalez. Uh, we've got Jeff, J. Evans24. Um, man, a lot of folks out there tonight. Billy Lover, um, Drunk Gizmo Customs, good seeing him this weekend. Frank Lira, great seeing him this weekend. Kevin McCoy, both the McCoys are here. And Kevin is also a member of the My Wife is More Popular Than Me support group. Uh, we've got G. Echevarria out in the chat. David Smith, um, EM Customs. And he was another awesome one at Mesquite County. I think that's everybody. Okay. Got a lot of folks. Yes. And we got a lot of folks joining us in the chat tonight. We didn't advertise a guest. But we did say show, that we yeah. have some peoples joining us. We did, and I mistakenly titled uh, the the episode before I I knew there were more people coming. So, mm. welcome to the Carver Custom Special featuring Brian and Stacy Lynn. Hello. Oh, Hello. Give the digital warm applause around us. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, another member of the support group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice to see you, Brian. Nice see you again. Yeah. After the last meeting we had. Was, yeah, absolutely. We're coming to terms with it. It's it's yeah, slow, no, it's a no slow shame. process. Yeah, no shame whatsoever. Nope. I was like Dorklair just popped in a little bill. Yeah, we got Dorklair and uh Kevin Boots. Kevin Ma Boots. Kevin Boots. Um and joining us all the way from somewhere in the world. Nate Strong, Trevor Williams, and Malcolm. <laughs> What's up, boys? I'm about to start penguin walking out of the background there for a second. So, yeah, I, I didn't realize they were going to still be hanging out together. I was messaging Trevor and Nate individually, you know, and I didn't realize they were still together. I didn't even bother to message Mal because I figured he was on like a, a million hour flight back home. But maybe, so, maybe it's like the whole purple gang gang thing taking the Jesse's uh, goat. Maybe they kidnapped Mal. 
Maybe he was supposed to be gone already. You never know. Yeah. You know, Are you guys keeping him out? I haven't found him yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Blink twice right. if you're hostage now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you need help? <laughs> oh, sweet. Did, didn't I see that, that Maverick was with you guys, too? Is he, like, tied up in the basement somewhere, or was that just a typo? No, he had us tied okay. up in the basement. And we oh. Oh. <laughs> That's more believable. Yeah. yeah. He was waiting on a flight. I know that. Oh. Um, so we're going to talk a lot about Muskecon. All the people on your screen here were, were there this weekend, had a great time. Uh, but before that, we've got this little thing that we like to call shelf selections. Um, Jesse, let's roll those. Oh, that's me this week. <laughs> Curtis was taking a nap, so I did all the work this week. Yep, you sure did. So coming up first is Curtis's first pick of the week. Yep, uh, this is Kustav Kumar Dutta. Um, does a lot of G.I. Joe picks, and uh, I just thought this one was really cool. I like the background of it. I like the pose there in the front. Um, just does some really cool shots, and, and this this was one of them. So, You know what? Snake Eyes is telling that ground that he's about to blast out that shooting the shelf sent him. I kind of got the feeling that he was dancing. Like, he was like, you know. Like doing like a robot, like you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Yeah. I uh I really like the um the background. I mean the whole the whole shot is great, but like the like that kind of shale rock fragments or whatever that's back there looks looks really cool with the like the really tan uh colors of their costumes and stuff. Uniforms, excuse me. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, well, we got we got a couple of photographers there. What do you guys think? Yeah, the colors and they're are really really nice. It does look a little bit like a dance routine, but uh, it's cool. <laughs> um, I really, yeah, it looks like an outdoor shot, and he did a good job, like you know, keeping everything in scale and not uh, making it look like you know, there's, there's... celebrating the kill. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping he's not going to fire that at the ground. And... <laughs> that was my move when I would play what was it, like Delta Forces back in the day. I'd play like yeah. you know, like death matches with my buddies over the landline they yeah. started like sniping me from the hills or something i would just like fire up into the air just like spray and then just point the grenade launcher at the ground and take myself out so at least they didn't get the points <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe all that's right. what he's doing yeah right. yeah uh, great shot good pick all right what do we got next jesse all right, for me is toy.cap on instagram um there's some behind the scenes uh, behind this showing how they got the 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 critter the the characters there like up up in the air and everything. I just thought this was cool with the Malfar coming down on the goblin and uh just looking like the goblin's like falling back the mountain and, and Malfar is just coming down right on him with that trident. Um it, it's cool seeing two two bad guys going up against each other. Yeah, that's that's a cool one. I really actually I like the the way that the Malfar is is posed. And I'm starting to have like that was one of those figures that I opened up the Aerithir wave. And I, I think I really didn't truly appreciate that character as much. I mean, and it wasn't that I didn't like it. It's just the rest of that wave is so good that I, I don't think I really gave it the attention it deserves. But lately, I've been just falling in love with that character. It's funny. We're just yeah. talking about him. Yeah, we were just talking about Malfa. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. He's a great one. What are we talking about? Get a couple that head and put it on the thigh gar and mm -hmm. some other stuff. Looked really, yeah, cool. looked really great. And, and I love those little wings, man. I hope we get some more characters that utilize those. Mm -hmm. They had him at the For table. Sure. That was one I was definitely eyeballing, but by the yeah. time I got there, it was gone. Yeah, I almost yeah, had Mal pick that up for me, but then I changed my mind and got what went pick, went with something else at the last minute because I needed it for a custom. <laughs> so, wasn't that your rap name in uh, in high school, Curtis? I Little think Wings? so. Yeah. Yep. Little Wings. What was it? <laughs> Little Wings. But it was Lil. <laughs> L -I -L. Yeah. Yeah. L L L L I L. Yeah. That should be his country name. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Little Wings. Um, Toy Logos channel says it loves my sombrero. You know, there's there's a story with this, and we'll we'll get into that here in just a second. So do we have to? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Next from Curtis. Okay, come on. You know I'm going to put this guy in every week that he has a new one because he keeps doing these battle beasts, and I love it. 
Um, you know, I, I did hear Jeremy was talking to some people this week about, you know, if four horsemen did a, another toy line, like what would he like to do? And he, he incorrectly said, uh, in humanoids, but what he re- meant to say was battle beast. And, uh, this is just another example of, you know, what that could look like if you had four horsemen doing battle beast. Um, and I just, it, this came out fantastic. I love how, you know, I mean, we've gotten the, the Kragnar, Rakagor, all those, and, so to use that and do this different skin tone to where it's it more, you know, kind of like a croc and that that head and the armor and and then the little the little che- little tiny chest piece uh, with that little uh, water logo. Um, yeah, I love this thing. Everything that he's been putting out with these Battle Beast tributes have been just stunning. Um, and, and I'd like to get my hands on one of his for sure. Yeah, super yeah cool. this is really cool. I, I especially like the uh, like the fin uh, on the the shoulder pauldrons there. Mm-hmm. That's why and I do do love that head from uh, I think that's from Paul's Customs because uh, I did one for on a, a Ar- Ar- Archimedes body a couple of years ago. That's such a fun head to paint, and it just looks really cool with that that coloration on it. Yeah. Yeah. I really oh, there's a super chat from Kent Pool. Curtis wears <laughs> pure Michigan well. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Pure um, Michigan found it in a well, maybe. And any other thoughts on this guy, folks? No, it's great. That's I didn't great. realize you get that head in that size, man. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah he's I love the it. fins to the left and the fins to the right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks really good on the 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 Kragnar, like the scaly Kragnar or Arachagor yeah. body. Uh, yeah, it looks much better on that than Archimedes. Mm-hmm. Cool. You don't have to agree with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. Oh, I keep forgetting that you're you're not doing it. Um, <laughs> buttons from Toro nine one three zero Goblin Gang Gang. Uh, I just thought this was cool with kind of the low light source, uh, just them all kind of lining up. Um, you know, giving the giving the Gobbo some love. I just thought this was really cool. I see uh, our buddy Captain Firebeards out in the chat, so he'll probably appreciate this one. Um, but yeah, just thought this was cool, kind of kind of Breakfast Club vibes uh, with the goblins, in my opinion. So just thought it was a fun one. Yeah, I, I, I love that low light there like like they're you know telling a scary story or something and um that thwick looks awesome in the middle which you know regardless of what emil and and you know well really emil says um thwick way better than than nubnik just fyi um yeah, but yeah this looks freaking amazing i love it yeah, really cool. It, it reminds me like uh, the turtles on top of a building or something like that. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, the colors. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and seeing the gobbles all together and all their different expressions. It's the best. It's like got Splinter in the background and the four brothers up front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like they're waiting on an ambush, like they're getting ready to jump somebody or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, That's when the scary knight came out from behind the corner, from Curtis. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a up and coming coming artist, uh, Emil Vic Vicman, and uh, Whiteman. You know, it's pronounced Whiteman. Oh, White Whiteman. Yeah. Um, he, <laughs> he Yeah, he he did this uh, amazing Sub Zero, and I like when when he goes and works on these tributes that he he does the he shows like the progress, progression, you know, from like. I, I know he does a lot, spends a lot of time just playing with parts and just putting things together and trying different things and pulling things apart that you wouldn't even think come apart and putting them ag- together in different ways to s- get that overall silhouette. Um, and then he tries to add some color to it in, in, you know, whatever app that he's using. And then you see the final, like what it came out to. And um, I think my favorite part on this custom on that, that torso because that's the torso that they use for like all the um you know the tabard wearing folks um but he the way that he painted it it really does look like it's like overlapping like a robe thing um like there's even some like even on the black that goes across the chest there and then there's the other black stripe there's like a hint of white on top of the black that makes it look like you know kind of like it's a separate piece um, so even though that, I know that piece is completely flat, he added some, some depth to it 
just by the the paints that he did. So he he did a real good job. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I yeah. love how he took the. Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Whoever was talking. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say for a newcomer, he does know seem to know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. he's, got, he's got potential. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I like how he took the uh, uh, Vorga mm-hmm. face mask and like fused it with the skull head to to give that like kind of masked look for him. Uh, that, that's pretty clever. It's fun seeing like the it all together unpainted. You know what I mean? As opposed mm-hmm. to here, you know, the, the, this is the recipe or whatever. Here's the it's it's just cool to see that. People yeah. Because- the the funny part is like if i look at that first picture like even when he put the parts together like if if i had if i even had the imagination to put those parts together like that i still wouldn't look at that and go oh this this is sub-zero you know like like he he can see things in a different way that i think most people can Mm -hmm. um you know he's got that like crazy scientist factor you know like there's there's some folks out there that that just do some weird things that I would like him, Nate Armstrong, um, Eric Miller. Uh, there, there's like folks that just kind of look at these pieces and they immediately see them in a different way than, than others do. So it's yeah, the mushrooms. Oh, yeah, that must be it. Yeah. It's magic. It's the, like, uh, at first I didn't realize that. Was the, What's that, Brian? Code and magical things happen. <laughs> at first I didn't even realize it was the leather hands. Like, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't even think about painting them like that. They didn't make it look like they just have a wrap. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 Really good. Yeah. Very cool. Next. <laughs> Next uh, is Dobin dot figures. Uh, Dan Tobin um, kind of doing the inverse of uh, a figment that uh, Eric Miller did with the, the inverse colors. But yeah, just the matching the Arachagor head to the Kragnar body and the purple on the horns. Go ahead, purple gang gang. Do your toot your horns or his horns. I don't know. Um, but I just thought Dan has become a phenomenal painter. Like I remember, you know, I, when I was still starting out talking to him about stuff and, you know, just seeing the leaps and bounds and progression he has made. Like he is just constantly cranking out stuff and getting better and better every time I see him post something. So uh, major props to Dan on, on this. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a killer looking paint job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, when when these bodies when we first started seeing them um you know on the pre-orders and stuff never once did i look at them and go i want to do a full repaint of that because that just is a lot of work <laughs> and um but you know we've seen two tonight with the the battle beast one and now this one where like people are taking on that task and they're killing it man they're just doing a great job so um you know kudos to cuz i i guarantee you know not only just the amount of time to takes to to cover a figure like this um but then the the different colors and the gradients you know the where one color is completely fading into another um just amazing work so yeah good good job on this one mm-hmm. yeah it's incredible work. Course, we featured this on legion's lounge arch last week so props to you guys for uh, following in our reading oh cool, cool. <laughs> I, I don't sometimes i don't get to catch that show i mean i, I might have that one but yeah you know. hey look <laughs> good, good, good. That's though. Before you talent it, recognizes right? talent, you know. Just because you <laughs> did it first doesn't mean we didn't also see yeah. it. Um, I, 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 I was just going to mention. I was going to mention this. That's a lot of work for for a guy who did an entire slog repaint. That's true, and I didn't really want to do that either. But then when I saw that head, I had to. Um, I just I love that head so much. But um, yeah, you know, as far as that that Legion's Lounge thing, I I it Let probably it go. got drowned out because I was thinking of, you know, all the 50 actors that, that Trevor announced for every role. Uh, well, I do want to bring this up. Jacob Fornesan, so, so much sculpt work. Um, I, I got to agree with this. Just seeing this in different color forms, it just helps mm-hmm. you see all the different details that Eric uh, and the horseman put into these sculpts. It yeah. is just the tiny, tiny little scales. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Well, and not only that, but they're not uniform. Like they're like, like if you just like look at that neck and stuff, it's not like it's the same pattern repeating, you know, and I'm sure there's some in there, but it looks so unique that it, it does look very natural. It's really mm-hmm. truly organic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Next. All right. Next. 
Um, the one yeah. Curtis I've been waiting all night for because he can't go a week without a Superman picture. Listen, this is just awesome. Like it is awesome. The that that scene from the Superman movie where he's on the building and because it, it, it it even shows that it's like referencing that if you go in like he's got the uh, behind the scenes photos and stuff and he's definitely referencing that where like the crook has the like the suction cups and he's like climbing up the wall and the next thing you know just Superman's just standing there like the opposite <laughs> way like you shouldn't be able to stand like that. Um, it, it's just a cool recreation of that shot with instead of a guy with suction cups you got Spider Man there so. I just think the the genius of of throwing that together like that, and then the shot itself looks great. The figures look great, but um, it just uh, seeing this, I was like immediately transported to watching that that Christopher Reeve Superman movie, and yeah, so it's just really cool. Yeah, I really like. Yeah, you know, Danny does great stuff. He, he was on yeah. uh, on uh, one of our uh, one of my uh, uh, what is my show? Toy Photo Bomb. Toy Photo Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing show. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no, he's he's fantastic, man. He does great work every month, and every month I, I I generally like pick something of his, and then I have to say, well, he's he's been on like two of them already, so <laughs> it's time for somebody else. I do. Uh, I I want to say the the thing I love about this is Spider Man and Superman are usually <laughs> such bright, colorful, like not playful, but like more hopeful, upbeat characters. So to see them in like a almost Batman like setting, mm-hmm. and you know their colors still popping out is just is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> Jeremy, oh, Jeremy, sorry. yeah, Jeremy. Jeremy made it home safely. Everybody, by the way, we got a message yes. from him earlier. We were concerned. Uh, we were yeah. heard from him. We were worried. It was several hours after the most of the rest of us had gotten home, so he must have gotten, <laughs> for, he must have gotten lost. He had quite a drive. It, it was at least a good ten minutes away. <laughs> I mean, we haven't heard anything from Travis yet, so we somebody might need to go check on him. <laughs> Uh, is there next. one more? <laughs> this one's a little bit gruesome, but I just love the composition Ooh. and and the look of it. Uh, you got a Vorgus two. This is from Tony Toybox. Open today. Um, uh, just I like the dial work. It's nice and clean. Um, <laughs> kind of a wider shot, and then that uh, that poor unfortunate soul in the background uh, up on that spike. Um, but yeah, I just I just thought, and you got that snowy background out in the out in the window. I just thought this was really cool. Yeah, I love that uh, the dial work on there, and and then the the background. But I I don't recognize the one that's on the spike. Is that is that from some toy line that somebody recognizes? I wonder that if it's might be a McFarlane. Yeah. I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, that's my thought. Is that it was a McFarlane of Older some sort? Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I love the uh, Vargas's cape. The cape looks awesome in this mm-hmm. shot. Yeah, it's like the wind billowing in through the, you know, through the opening. Yep. Yeah, composition really nice. Beautiful. Yeah, and his spear, one of my favorite uh, accessories from the Mythic Legions line. Mm. Cool. I don't think I've even gotten mine out of the package. I mean, I got the Vargas out, but I don't think I got the spear out. We got a request for a little bit of shake uh, from Dig Big Dub for you, Mal. <laughs> There's no room to shake over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and well, that was uh, it for shelf. Oh, selection. now you can change this. Now you can change. Right, we're done. I did. I didn't know what was coming up. Now I do. I know that next slide is we're done. Um, <laughs> good picks. Thanks. Not quite. Try. I mean, we're no toy good. photo bomb, but yeah. we we do okay. So, um, so. This weekend was Muskecon, and um, Muskecon, yeah, Muskecon. <laughs> yep. so I, it was hyped up as uh, you know, kind of the Legions Con Midwest, um, the, the, the Midwest mythic meetup, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about did it, did it meet the hype? Um, so we've got some folks here that uh, you know came back. For, come came for a first time, came for a second time. Um, let, let's talk about how the event went. I'm going to start with the uh, the lens here because you guys were added to the the vendor list pretty late. Um, like we, yeah. yeah, we we had a show with Pete two weeks ago, and uh, we were talking about your bot, which you you graciously gave us uh, one to give away on a couple different shows, um, and then we talked about how you were going to come and and visit the con. And Pete was like, well, why aren't they just going to 
be there. Why aren't they going to have a table? Um, and before the show was over, you did. So, so from two weeks ago, not knowing that you're going to be at a show to actually presenting at a show, like, tell us about that, that two week journey and, and how, it, how it finished out for you guys. Well, like halfway through it, like, you know, he was started texting me. He's like, this, he's like, you want a table? I can make it happen. I was like, I looked at her. I was like, I don't really have anything for this. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I don't have anything really. And I was like, you got two weeks. So uh, I my <laughs> message back to him. Right. <laughs> Come on, work. <laughs> so like pretty much like my reply back to him was like, I really don't have anything for this, dude. Um, let's do it. So I, mean, <laughs> so I just pretty much gathered up whatever I had left from Legion's Con torch wise and just threw together some other stuff and made it happen. Nice. So, so, I mean, ob obviously the big thing that I was looking forward to was was seeing your bots because um, that's the thing that we've really been hyping up the last few weeks. I and you, you didn't disappoint because that like the way that you had them with, you know, kind of a, a cosmic figure in the middle and then the bots like circling on e either side um, was just such a cool look. And I, I can definitely see that in, you know, any cosmic display. Um, and then you had all like the the painted like arms and different parts laying out so that people could see like what the different parts were and stuff. Um, so did did you have any of? I know I know I picked up mine there, but did you have any any bot sales? I know you did some move some dios and some things like that. Um, how, how did that go? I did move some bots, uh, Mister Mal over there, or as Dusty called him, Magic Mal. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> He he bought one. I got I sold probably about four or five of them there. Nice. Um, it went pretty good. You know, I got to talk to some people about it, show them the idea of it, and they got pretty interested. Some of them picked them up from that alone. Mm -hmm. um, some from word of mouth from your show and stuff like that. So that was really cool. Um, also, yeah, Chris Johnson he got the the giveaway from the uh, Mythic Meetup. Mm -hmm. So I mean. Uh, Trevor has one. You got. You just got yours. So I'm. I'm still waiting to see how like people paint them up. I'm really excited to see what people do with them and see how they turn out and start seeing how people use them. Yeah. Um, well, and then you had the like the dial with the big head on it, and then you had some smaller dials. Like how did the how did that do? Uh, the big dial. I still have it. No problem. Um, so it might get put away and get brought to Legion's Con. Um, the little dials were gone about ten minutes before opening. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, so I didn't expect them to all go like that, but it went quick. I had a lot of good responses to them, a lot of mm -hmm. good feedback. So I will be definitely making a bunch of those for Legion's Con this year and nice. different styles. Yeah. So, cool. cool. Nice. Well, and, and Stacy, you had some some figures that were painted up there too, right? I didn't um, do any of those. those oh, you didn't? Good. No. Oh, I only I have you... one figure that I've painted and oh, I haven't, okay. I'm not totally done yet. Gotcha. So those were yours then, Brian? From what I heard. Yeah. Because <laughs> you guys had some cool figures. I saw there was like one, I think it was like a goblin that had like a dagger shoved into his arm, like where the hand would go. He had, uh, there was like a knight with some some fur and, and like some blue on the details and stuff that looked really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys had some You know, cool we've had those in our... Our, we've had those on our shelf selections. I, mm -hmm. I know. I'm trying to get them to talk about their stuff that they had at the. But you got to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The hat's just giving too much freedom. He just can't control it anymore. That's yeah. all. It's... Go ahead. Talk about yourselves. I'll mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm still pretty new to doing the figure customization stuff. So, I mean, I figured try to show off a little bit of what I've done so far. I mean, it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little uh, intimidating being next to like a lot of like really good... gang gang routine. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little intimidating at first being like close to like all the like you guys that have been doing a lot longer than me and like Eric Miller. But like it was really cool because like got a lot of good compliments and stuff like that from all you guys. So it was mm -hmm. like it was really reassuring that I'm going in the right direction. So awesome. For sure. Totally. Yeah. I tell them all the time. Awesome, and I, I love that thing. Mm -hmm. Thanks, dude. And your yeah. little Fuzzmonk assassin. <laughs> Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not just because it's a Fuzzmonk. You did a great job with it. Yes, it and yeah, the guy it. with the knife in his hand is is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't asking, have thought to put a dagger in the arm. That, that was cool. If the bots are available outside of MesquiteCon, mm -hmm. which I believe they are, but I don't know what your, your turnaround is on them right now. Um, 
I have some leftovers. I'm going to uh, wait for a minute and just keep an eye out on my Instagram for updates on how those are going to be available. Um, I'm going to see about something first and then go from there. Cool. We also have staffs left over. Yes, too. I will be posting the staffs as well in a cup ball in this week sometime. So, what are the staffs for? Or like, I, I don't, I don't know that I saw those. They're the glowing staffs that you can uh, put in your like the new wizards and stuff. They all oh, run okay. on a battery and stuff like that, just like the torches and everything. Gotcha. Um, different different colors. Cool. Yeah, we got red, blue, and green, and different staff color designs and things like that. Beautiful. So, so then uh, you know, following with the the folks that this was kind of their first go around with Muskecon. Uh, Trevor and uh, and Mal, I know this was your first time going. So, you know, you've obviously been to other cons. What, what were your guys' thoughts of, you know, Michigan as a whole, but then also the, the con and how, how it went? Um, I mean, it was, it, was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. The Mythic Meetup uh, was particularly good and mm -hmm. a, a great time. Um, the con itself is quite small. Um one day is probably plenty for it. Um, mm -hmm. Michigan is is very nice, very very. Uh, we we gotten to see a bit of it, just not just Muskegon, uh, Muskegon High Street. We got to see, you know, by the Great Lakes, and uh, which was beautiful. Um, so I was moving here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, guys, you guys went like to the to the beach, didn't you? Didn't you go like on the like near the lake and and take some shots? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, very cool. But it was really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, I gave him a mini tour. <laughs> nice. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's what? not what I expected, honestly. I mean, not that it was, I didn't expect it to be nice, but it was, it, the beach was a surprise. Mm. Um, what was that little town, Nate? Like the little, like Midwestern town right there, that, you know, just past the convention center off the, the roundabout. It was like all the little sheds. It looked like a old Western town. It was like all the little sheds with the water troughs next to them. Was it like a I, farmer's market or something? I don't know if I saw that. I'm not sure. To be honest. Honest. Okay. It's from uh, the <laughs> place. Yeah. Random, random I don't know. I'll have to look into it. I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure, Jesse. I mean, we went past it at like 6.30 this morning when we were heading out of town and like the city was just dead. We were like, is it 6 or is it 3 o'clock in the morning? Because there was like no one driving around. <laughs> <laughs> so. Saturday morning early, you know. Did you see the After salt piles? Patties, oh, yeah. Of course, of course, all the salt piles. No. Uh -huh. so so you folks that you know the the lens you know coming out and, and doing the vendor thing for the first time at mesquite con and and mal and trevor making the trip um is this something you see yourself doing again is this a one and done or are you guys back next year i'm gonna try i think i'm gonna try and come back i mean we're talking about like mal's talking about maybe going to power con right yeah yeah i mean I've if got, it happens if it, if it happens i've got a couple of friends who want to go to power con so they may talk me into that which of course means i can't Gotcha. Three trips, but I'll, if, but if you're living happen, here, well, I, well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you can go to many. Yeah, but, but yeah, so you know, there's a chance. Yeah, Brian, Stacy. Yeah, we're definitely planning attending, and if Pete needs another rainy day, very I'll nice. Try to throw something together again. Yeah, cool. I wanted to go last year, but it just wasn't in the cards for us. So yeah, I mean, as as somebody that was there last year. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's not the biggest con in the world, um, but it had a little bit of a Legion's presence last year and it really amped up this year. I mean, last year it was, you know, you had the Horseman, Wolf King, and then uh, Eric Miller and uh, Alexander Deshaw across the way. And then this year, then we added, you know, we had Motu Joe with his shirts down there at the other end. We had um, uh Frank Lira, who brought some amazing customs. They were fantastic. Yeah, he, he does great um, work. I've been telling him he needs to start posting his stuff. He's he's doing really good. Yeah. Also yeah. another contender for the my wife's more popular than me in the cabal thing. <laughs> I was gonna that's, that's I was gonna yeah. him for sure. Yeah, because yeah. Anna was so much fun on Saturday <laughs> night. Well, I think I think Frank's one of those guys that's suffering in silence and he's gotta be willing to come out and, and just say it first and say, My my wife is more popular than me, and then we'll <laughs> gladly take him in. Um but yeah, some people just suffer in silence and you don't need to. All right. Um, just let it go, Frank. <laughs> let it go. Yeah. But uh, and speaking of, you know, wife more popular than you. I mean, then we had Dusty Standiford there mm -hmm. and uh, and Ange. 
and they had a really cool setup. I mean, obviously you've got the, the, uh, coloring books, but he had some, some really cool like dio pieces. Um, mm -hmm. I got like this, uh, translucent skull with like the smoke effects that Bro, are coming off of it. And stuff. Damn it. You sniped and, twice. Yeah, oh. I did. <laughs> <laughs> he had, he had some gray ones. Oh, he had oh, one guys. translucent blue one. And I, yeah, there you go. There we there go. go welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the group, Frank. <laughs> There you go. Guys. Curtis will teach yeah. you the handshake next time we, we're all together. Exactly. And everything. You know, we'll get you in there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Dusty had some cool pieces. And then, you know, Anch had a couple of customs there that were just amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. the one, yeah. the, wow. the camouflage thistle thorn we've had yeah. on shelf selections. Um, and then she had this like dwarf, like this lava dwarf where she did this effect where it looks like lava is like actually coming out of the armor and stuff. Oh, just wow. fantastic. Mm -hmm. So. So it was cool to see everybody that was there last year came back and then all these new folks that, that came this year. So I just hope that the, 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 everybody that was there this year comes back next year and maybe we get a few more. Um, so yeah, it, it was a lot of fun, you know, to your guys point, it's not the biggest thing in the world. It is a one day event. Um, for me, it's like, cause you know, I hear what you're saying, Mal, you can't go to like all it's, we're not these lucky East coast guys that get to just go up to a million shows. Um, I can really probably make it to two shows a year. And so this is that one for me that bridges the gap between Legion's cons and gives me a little bit of that, you know, experience that family friendly, like mm -hmm. going out to dinner last night, like that yeah, kind of thing, that the mythic so meetup. Yeah. Just yeah, hanging was... out with folks and talking and having a good time. <laughs> like that's, that's what it's all about. So uh, Jesse laughing. Night. Yeah. Yeah. Might, yeah, that meet dinner last night might be the highlight of the weekend for me. <laughs> it was yeah. good. That was our first time getting actually go out and eat with like the group of people, and it was just a blast. Like between you and Dusty, I don't know how we got through our meal. Yeah, my stomach hurt from <laughs> laughing so much, right. and then it continued after dinner. Right, <laughs> thanks to Anna. I think it was kind yeah. of cool, uh, the actual con itself as well, the way that the mythic people tended to, they might go and have a little look around the con, but it was all, everyone was congregated right. at the mythic end and, you know, mm -hmm. people who didn't know legions were coming in and everyone was sort of part of the, well, this is mythic legions and this is what they do and how we use them. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was, yeah. And it, it's one of those things too, where it's like, like each time that I go to one of these events, I get to um, kind of hang out with some different folks and just spend a little bit more time and learn with them. Like, so last night, I'll, I'll listen, I'm just going to be br brutally honest. I kept bugging that my wife is going to kill me, guys, because this is their place. Like they 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 freaking live here. And I'm like, after the show's over, people are going to want to meet up. Where the hell are we going? Where are we eating? What are we doing? And nobody would make a freaking decision. Like Steve's like, I don't know. I'm going to go home and somebody will tell me and then I'll come back. Okay, whatever. Travis wouldn't make a decision. Pete wouldn't make a decision. And I just got to a point where I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go to the ro restaurant hotel because my feet are hurting. I don't feel like walking wherever. And I'm just going to go here. And then people just started showing up. And because of that, instead of like sitting around those yahoos in Michigan, um, I ended up sitting around a bunch of people that I really haven't spent a whole lot of time with, you know, the, the lens dusty um, Alexander was there. Eric Miller was sitting next to me. And, right. and so I got to, you know, talk to them when I haven't really spent a whole lot of time with them in the past. Um, and, and that was the same thing at Legion's con. And, and so, you know, each time I go to these events, I mean, me and Mal hung out for like, I don't know, three, four hours at Legion's con. Um, it was, it was pretty epic. So I don't know. It, it's it, this community so large that it's it's like you can't just go to one. Like each time you go to these, you you expand your your family and friends. So mm -hmm. it was pretty cool. Yeah, we were saying today it was easier to, for this with this to talk to everybody who was there as opposed to like Legion's Con where you got to kind of pick a couple of groups. Mm -hmm. you know, like oh, these guys are going outside. These guys are going to dinner over here. These guys are going to the bar. Yeah, the fire pit. Yeah, it's like. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you could really kind of talk to everybody here. It was really, it was nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even power cons kind of hard to like connect with everybody. Like, yeah. you know, really strongly, um, yeah. strongly. Yeah. That's a word. Sure. Sure. Um, that works. But yeah, yeah, this was just the intimacy might be too strong of a word, but just like, oh, I was just going like, to say, that's what Brad, how Brad Jones described yeah. it. And I think it's, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was, and it was very casual too. Like the the con itself was just kind of mm. low key. Like you know, we were talking to people all day. It felt like, but it wasn't like 
what what'd you say because it was so loud or anything like mm -hmm. that or it was just mm -hmm. it was really cool it was really it was a nice laid back con and just the whole mm -hmm. weekend itself was was a lot of fun um you know i guess trevor got his ear talked off about brett stuttard's photography mm -hmm. um, for sure you know <laughs> um, <laughs> I tell you what, though, one one thing that none of us really talk enough about is Brett Stoddard snoring because, man, he could saw some logs. That dude, that dude is a freaking chainsaw through the night. I mean, he's, he's not that bad. He's it was, that bad. It was rough, man. It was rough. Like, so Brett Stoddard had the one bed. Jesse had the other. I was sleeping in the chair right next to the air conditioner. Right. So I've got the air conditioner blowing in my ear on this side. I've got a fan on high blowing in my ear on this side. And all I can hear is from 50 feet away or whatever on the far other side of the room, Brett Stoddard just chainsawing all night long. So it was, yeah, <laughs> it was something, man. <laughs> I slept through it. So it wasn't that bad. And, you know, I, I'm sure, I'm sure I had a couple, but Curtis, I, I woke up this morning and heard you, you ripping a couple snores. Here's, so. here's what I'll say. I recorded from, from my position, like, however many feet away I recorded 20 seconds of Brett snoring and sent it to him. And he was, he was dying laughing. So, <laughs> <laughs> you can over the air conditioner, over the fan, you can hear him on the phone. Um, yeah. So just saying, um, but Nate, you were there last year. Um, obviously you're a Michigan boy. Um, yeah. I, I what, what were your thoughts last you know, year to this year? Uh, what? So, what was your thoughts from last year's Mesquite Con to this year's? Um, it's it's growing. I, I it's my third year. It's every year it's growing. It's good to see new people coming in. Um, I had a blast getting to be behind the table with um, Jeremy and Travis, and you know, seeing old friends, seeing new faces, and um, you know, we always say it's one of the best parts is introducing new people to the line, mm -hmm. and then you know talking about the lore and how the pop and swaps work and, you know, and then sending them down the table to, to see you guys and Wolf King and Steven and Eric and like you said, Frank and everybody on down and, and then, you know, they'll go check that out and then they'll come back to the mythic table. And mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Myth meet, mythic meetup was a great addition this year. That was fun. Yeah. That was Pete, great. Uh, did a fantastic oh, job. He's, he's such a good meeting. master of ceremonies oh, uh, at anything. Sure. You know, he's anytime far, you put far. a mic in his hand, yeah, he's golden. Yeah. Also, pro tip if you go to a mythic meetup and Pete's in charge, bring your child. It'll pay yeah, off. For sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah they, just they rent, made up, like, if you don't have one, just rent it. Rent yeah, yeah, just, just borrow somebody, you know? Yeah. yeah and if they yeah, give you, you if, if they give you a number and your number is like in the like close to 100, just give it back and get another number because they're not even going to call anything over like 60. So yeah, if right. they give you 90 something, just throw it at them and take another one. Yeah, go with 25 because uh, I think Travis called that like four. Yeah, they called 25 yeah. several. I think that might be Travis's favorite number. I think it is. <laughs> yeah. So after that night, were you surprised they couldn't make a decision on dinner? <laughs> no, I mean I was there last year when they couldn't make a decision, so it doesn't you know surprise what, me. No, I think it just a table outside of that hotel, anyways. It was yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just think it worked out for me, anyways, because I got to hang out with some folks that I haven't spent as much time with, and and man, it was a blast. So yeah, that was a good um, group. This, this Well, then most of them so came good. wandering in into the next room oh, yeah. anyway, and yeah, they got put in that room that uh, I knew you guys were in there, but I walked in there for like five minutes at the end. And just the acoustics in that little side room was horrible for how many people were in there. Mm -hmm. Like my head we were, felt like it was going to explode. I don't know. It was pretty good when the fucking, when the waitress walked in and she, she uh, told Ma Maverick uh, congrats on your make a wish that you get to hang out with some cool people. <laughs> man, he turned beat red, man. I've yes, never seen did. a face turn that red. Yeah, was, that I missed that. Yeah. Oh, it was so great. <laughs> um, Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I, I hope this keeps growing. I think overall the con, I don't know that the con did better this year overall than it did last year. Um, but the Legion's presence was definitely ramped up. I, I would say at least double, if not more. Would you, would you agree with that, Nate? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So yeah. it was even, even we were just saying at the mythic meetup, you know, mm -hmm. There's some faces in there. I didn't know who they were. I didn't recognize them, which is a great thing. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we just hope to keep it 
Well, and, and the oh, fact that the horsemen want to keep coming back. I mean, they this is now two years in a row that they've been here. I, I, all indications from talking to Jeremy is they fully plan on being here again or being there again next year. Yeah, um, a good time for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would say for, for anybody that didn't attend, if you're thinking about it next year, man, why not? It's a good time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and if anybody wants to see Mal there next year, Make sure you sabotage PowerCon. Make sure it doesn't happen. Um, talk to Val. Talk him out of doing one because um, we we want to see Mallet at. Uh, I do that hard. So. <laughs> or maybe you just come to PowerCon, Curtis. Uh, maybe I don't know. I like, I like Michigan, man. I mean, you can get a hat like this. Listen, if you can go to a state where they sell not one hat at a gas station, but they have a rack of hats like this. At a gas station, it's I mean, called a truck stop. I'm sure you can find yeah. those in Ohio too. We're pretty trashy. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, like, you know, you stop, you to stop at a gas station, you go to the bathroom, you come out, and you see a whole, like, almost like an aisle of these kind of hats. You're gonna pick one up, and then you're gonna feel your freedom intensify. Have you like, ever been to a it, Bucky's? I'm just wondering. No, because I feel like your head would explode if you walked into a Bucky's or something. <laughs> if you're that like entertained by one hat rack, <laughs> it was it was something, man. At a gas station, though, man, and and I did uh, find out that from from Dusty that I am an Indiana ten, so I'm what they call uh, Indiana pretty. Um, but yeah, so that I can't believe you got that hat at a gas station. I, <laughs> I just can't believe you got that hat. Period. No matter where you found it. Come on, man. It's got an eagle on it. Mar Marka. <laughs> I have a yeah. green one with an eagle on it, and no one's impressed by that. I'm I'm surprised that Mal didn't pick one up. How do you come over here from England and not get one of these? I you know, it one of those ink block tests. I didn't realize it was an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mom, <laughs> Beijing uh, back to pride. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Um. So what else, guy? Like, uh, tell me about some experiences this weekend. Uh, we'll well, first of all, with... I want to comment. I don't remember who said it in the chat, but no, Curtis does not saw like a crazy beast or whatever you said. I, I heard a couple this morning, and that was it. Um, well, I so... will say that I used to snore really bad. My my wife said it was terrible. Like I played her the Brett Stoddard <laughs> video, and, and she's like, "That's nothing. You used to be terrible." But after I had my uh, my weight loss surgery, like a few months after that, like I you know dropped some pounds and stuff. She said it it com almost completely went away. So, um, you know, I, I'm a recovering snorer, um, and I hope one day to help Brett get there. So, yeah, you could probably do with helping me get there as well. I think I. Uh... Kept Trevor awake uh, and not in a good way on uh, Thursday, Thursday evening. Was that mm -hmm. when we were here? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had headphones. <laughs> yeah. Did did uh, did Mal make you keep the air conditioner off? Because I know that's one thing when they went, uh, they were at uh, Legion's Con. Apparently, we found out that the European guys, they don't like the air conditioning. They, they, they're they deathly afraid of the cold. Well, it's generally cold and damp there anyway. So, right? I mean, it's not me. <laughs> Are you, I, oh, okay. I so that's just that's just John and Rich. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. Man, we're okay. all warm. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, we had we had ours on full blast. Like it, it, like okay. Oh, it'll only go down to sixty four. All right, well that's where it's staying all weekend. Yeah, I so. got yelled at for that. Yeah, oh, he I, turned it down. I turned it back up. Every time we left the room, I turn it all the way down so it was nice when we got back. And every time we get back, you turn it back up. Like, I was like, why it. is that freezing in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! All right, so so. You know, I know it's only a one day con, but tell me about some experiences. We're, we're going to just start from Nate. We're going to move our way from from left to right. Nate, tell me about one of your favorite experiences from the weekend. I love seeing a couple of guys that came last year mm -hmm. and first time I'd met them. I think this might have been the first time they started getting Mythic Legions. Mm -hmm. You know, it was definitely their first con for them. They may have picked up a figure or two, but that's when they really jumped in big time. And mm -hmm. it's never come back. And to have them talk about what they learned about um, the line, the community over this past year, they were worried about coming into this line so late and seeing the community and figuring, oh, we've all been in for so long and there's so many click friendships and everything. And it's no surprise to us to hear them say, but we're extremely welcomed. Mm. You know, um, they've just 
they uh, same thing we've we've heard over and over and over again. We've been in a lot of other groups. No one's as as welcoming and as supportive as the as this community. Um, so it was great to see them having been a year in and to come back and really engrossed in it. And they're at the Mythic Meetup and having a blast. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll tag on to that a little bit because not only is the the Mythic you know, the, the legions community, I guess, um, that way, but also the, the Michigan group, like, because you guys are pretty tight knit kind of toy group. I know you guys do like some swapping and, and, you know, you, you hang out a lot and that kind of thing. Um, but like you go up there and it's not like just the Michigan guys hang together and then everybody else kind of like, everybody's really welcomed and, and pulled in. And I just think, you know, I, I know Pete does a lot of work to put that con together, but I feel like all the Michiganders, um, you know, really do embrace everybody that that's come into the con. So I think that's really cool, too. Cool. That's nice to hear. Yeah. What about you, Mal? Anything that stood out this weekend that you, you really enjoyed? Um, we kind of touched on it, really. It's the the sort of with it being a bit more of an intimate nature mm -hmm. was that opportunity to talk to some people that haven't talked to as much and mm -hmm. get to genuinely get to know some people a bit better um mm. and I, I mean that was as i keep i've said a few times to a few people the con wasn't really why i came up you know support right being great and all and i was pleased to do that but it was about coming to see these guys you guys you know uh, so that more intimate nature was actually really cool however it would be good to see it grow right so another legions thing that people can go to and gather at mm -hmm. yeah i think you know if if we continue to see you know, the, the people that came last year came again this year and then we got more. And if the people that came this year come next year and more people come, you know, it's just going to keep going that way. So um, I, I do have a question though for you, Mal. After spending so much time with uh, Trevor and Nate, you know, before the con and during and after the con, um, when is it that we're going to get a trade where you're going to Legion's Lounge and Dorklayer goes to Euro Legion's? Uh -huh. I, there's the problem with this is there's not enough hair in the room. <laughs> yeah. so that's why we, we need Bill. To, we have to have a hair <laughs> rest balance. Out, yeah. Johnny's our hair. Bill is theirs. You you know? Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> we can say John for Bill. Um, but, yeah. You probably could have found a wig in the same gas station. Curtis found that. <laughs> you probably <laughs> can. Uh, probably a mullet one too. So. <laughs> they may even have a hat like this with mullet hair hanging out the back. So just you know, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> Um, what about you, Trevor? You you flew in. Obviously, you've been you know to a lot of cons. Um, what, what were your thoughts on this? What, what was a what was the moment that stuck out for you? Uh, I enjoyed learning about the various uh, shapes and densities of pretzels. Mm. <laughs> Lots of different variety, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and dipping sauces that go with them, yeah. The right. Cheese ratio was yeah. disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and how much tolerance I had for that many carbs? In one sip. Uh oh. Uh, oh. oh. Shake his head. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> well, Curtis, you're on another show now. <laughs> Beauty. I knew growing out my hair was helpful. Actually, maybe Jesse at this point. <laughs> Um, and you know, another thing that was really cool, Trevor, is is hearing the work that you're doing with this new book and and all the pictures that you're taking. It sounds like a, a very big undertaking, um, but it was cool to see Jeremy, you know, show those pictures and hear about the work that you're doing and stuff. So, yeah. um, other than just being overworked right now, what are your thoughts on that? No, it was cool that uh, he he brought that up and was able to share that with people, and uh, you know kind of lights a fire under my ass too to get these things done because now everybody knows about it yeah. <laughs> yeah nobody would have been disappointed if it hadn't come out uh at the time and now uh now it's it's all i'm screwed yeah it's a little uh, pressure one like jeremy's like if you want to doubt sooner than later you need to talk to trevor yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you know and it gave some it gave people uh something to talk to you about instead of you know photographing a dragon and if you oh, need okay. a panoramic lens to do it and and that kind of thing yeah yeah so, so you probably will <laughs> Real quick, if we can set this up, because I don't know if it it's broken on the 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 cabal. Yeah, Brad Brad did a live video, but yeah, did go he? ahead. Okay, yeah, oh, did. okay. Go ahead. So for anyone watching that hasn't caught that live from Brad, uh, there's going to be a new book, not the story book that they've been working on for for a while. This is a new um, Mythic Legions book, the first ten years. So it's going to be kind of going through the whole line from beginning to to where it currently is. Um, 
So it'll be kind of just locking down the history and Trevor's doing like all the turnaround shots. Character and, by character, uh, page yep. for each character, a little bit of a bio, um, what it comes with, and a little bit of a story behind each one of the, the characters, like, you know, where the name came from, things like that. So, Yeah, and even some information about like the the different waves and, and uh, he said like even talking about like kind of test shots and what those are and so, you know, all the things that are included in the the first 10 years. So, yeah, it, it looks really cool. Um, it was good to see not only the the individual shots, but to see some of your other work in there, Trevor, like that the picture of the Furious Four around the table and stuff, which is yeah, I've, I've actually got it sitting right next to me on the wall. We had it over in the other corner and we moved it here so we could I could see it while I'm oh. on the show. Um, just one of your best shots. And and. Um, yeah, so seeing some of those pieces in there too is is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a dense book, man, and uh, I think people are going to dig it. Like, it's going to be it's going to be fun just to look back at that stuff and see it all together and the packaging and stuff that Nate's done too. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going uh, to be cool. Yeah, yeah, and it sounded yeah, like uh, for Jeremy thought that they'd be able to solicit it sometime this year. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah um stacy at all <laughs> yeah stacy what about you what was a, a moment that stuck out this weekend that that you really appreciated uh dinner last night mm. and then after dinner just hanging out in the lobby and as i said like my stomach hurt from laughing yeah so hard at like between everything at jesse Anna. snorting <laughs> yeah and i also had uh earlier in the day Jesse played with the goat for me and he started laughing. And so I oh, recorded man. that and I was like, oh, this is, this is she, funny. This she is ran funny. back to the table. Look what I got. Show me a video of Jesse just losing his shit over the goat. So yeah. what, what you may have seen, if you watched purple gang gang live last night, I had kidnapped Jesse's goat. So a little story behind that. Um, so Jesse, first of all, Jesse was a stud. Um, you know, he was all stressed out beforehand, like talk. He's sending me like hand drawn pictures of how he wants to set up the Wolf King table and stuff. And I'm like, Jesse, last year I had a basket of heads and a basket of weapons. That's all I had. So anything you do is going to be an upgrade. Like we say this is the second year Wolf Kings there, but we had two baskets last year. Yeah. Yeah. I think I sold five heads. So, you know, so Jesse set up this huge elaborate display and everything. And he's on his feet the whole time. And he literally left three times, one to go to the horseman table, literally took him like 15 seconds, one to go over to Travis's thing to see if he could shine his little UV light on the, the blue Hagnon. And then he went to the bathroom one time during the convention. And uh, when he came, I, I told him each time that he was leaving that I was keeping track of his time and I was going to let Len know. So, <laughs> so, but one of the times that he went away, I took the goat and I made a little video for the purple gang gang that I was kidnapping the goat, but I did it in like with my phone up and down instead of landscape. And so I had to do it again, but then Jesse came back from the bathroom. So I had to like sneak behind him with the goat behind me and like go around the corner. And they really wanted me to play up this maniacal laugh as I, you know, talking about kidnapping the goat. So I go on the other side of the Shaw's display and I'm like in the middle of the aisle, like people are shopping around me and stuff. And I film this video for purple gang gang saying that I stole the goat and I start laughing loudly. And, and all these people are just like looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. And, my table. It was awkward. Yeah. 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 So, the, so <laughs> they put that on the show last night, but what you didn't see on the show last night is after that was done. Cause Jesse didn't notice me take the goat. He didn't notice me doing the video. He didn't notice me laughing like an idiot. But as I was trying to sneak back in with the goat and I'm across the way, he sees me with the goat and he yells across the way and he goes, somebody stop that man. He stole my goat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, which, yeah, which isn't an unusual phrase in Michigan. So like, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The point there was like, a, <laughs> there was a couple people who were not, people who knew us that were turning around like what is happening like, yeah, what's going on <laughs> uh all right brian what about you what was the moment that stuck out for you this weekend i mean like she said dinner was the main thing but like there was a couple people that i met for the first time from the cabal that i remember seeing and i was trying to match the faces with the names and everything and they were saying yeah we don't really talk a lot you know i, I don't really say a lot of things and it was like getting a chance to meet them in like a smaller setting mm-hmm and seeing them kind of open up a little bit more was also really cool. 
the mythic meetup and that was a good experience for that and then seeing him come around to the tables and getting to talk to him a little bit more like meeting david um uh, he's somebody i've seen like comment and like like some of my posts in the cabal mm. and i never had a chance to meet him uh unfortunately he got sick so he wasn't really able to do too much at the con but right it was really great to get a chance to actually meet him and there was a couple other ones um Jeremy, I think, was the one dude's name, J Mac or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah he was another one. But yeah, that, I think that's probably like the best part is getting to finally get to meet more people that you know you see in the cabal. You you know you recognize them and getting to match the face to the name finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, there was there was some folks. I mean, I we see names in here, and sometimes people are not using their actual names. They're using some sort of alias or some, you know, emoji or some picture. So you don't really like you see them, and it, like they see your face, you know, because you're on on YouTube, but you don't see theirs. So you know they have to come up to you and and say who they are, and then maybe say their handle, and then you're like, oh, okay, got it, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's good to make those connections in your brain with the face to the name. So. Um, yeah, cool. What about you, Jesse? This was your first time in Michigan. Well, well I don't know. You've traveled next. abroad a lot. So, oh, you you're, want me to go? Next, you're, okay. you're next up. Yeah. So this, I this, was, hat. yeah, this was my second time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, listen, I just love, even if there was no show, I would love going up there just to hang out with, with those guys up in Michigan. Um, but the fact that there is a show and brings in other people from outside, um, super cool. I, I hope that the Legion's presence keeps growing. Um, you know, I live in Missouri. There's not a whole lot going on around here. Like I, I go, there's a local toy show that maybe comes like every three months. And I think in, in like five years, I've seen mythics there like twice. And it's never like a table of mythics. It's like one guy that has a table of a bunch of stuff and like two mythic figures. So I don't have that presence around here. So even though it's, you know, somewhere around the neighborhood of eight to nine hours away, um, it's still closer than any of the other shows. So I, I love just having had the ability to do that. But I would say the thing that stuck out to me, and this was something that I, I noticed at Legion's Con, and it seems like it carried over here, was seeing more families. I, I love that, that it's not just, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just a room full of dudes, um, you know, hanging around and talking about their toys. It's, it's a bunch of couples and kids. And, you know, we, we went to that mythic meetup and you had, you know, people in their sixties, you had kids there like, you know, whatever, 10 years old. And, um, you know, you go out to dinner and you have, you know, couples and all this kind of stuff. It, it, it's just, it's got this real good family vibe about it. And I'm glad that, um, you know, that carried over to this event as well. Um, because I love seeing that, you know, we joke around about the, the support group thing. Um, but yeah, seeing, seeing all the couples, that are both involved and excited about this stuff is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I thought you were going to tell a different story about a moment at the, the, the horseman table that you witnessed. That was pretty funny. You want me to tell that? Yeah, that was okay. (laughs) So, um, for those of you that don't know Vernetta, she is, amazing. Um, and you know, part of that, my wife is going to kill me crew. And so, uh, late in the day on Saturday, I mean, the con runs till five o'clock and, and it was kind of dying down a bit. It was like maybe an hour left of the show. Um, so Jeremy had walked off. I think even Travis walked off for a second. And so Jim was at the table by himself. So Jim is helping people and answering questions of the four horsemen. Um, and, Travis comes back while Jim is helping this, this customer and Jim turns towards Travis and myself and Vernetta. And, and he goes, uh, he's holding a Malleus that he was talking to this customer about. And he's like, does this one have the, the jaw that opens and closes? And Vernetta goes, ain't that your toy line? Like, <laughs> like, 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 shouldn't you know this shit? Like, you know, <laughs> And it was just so funny. And then, you know, Steve behind us has got to be Steve. He's like, yeah, but, you know, you work at the gas station. You don't know what, everything about all the octane of the gasoline. And, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, J- Jim even said, he's like, he's like, listen, I've been around this stuff for many years. I know quite a bit about it, but I don't know near as much as you fans do. So, um, but it was, yeah, it was just a cool little interaction. So it's funny. What about you, Jesse? There, there are so many fun things like you, like, like some of you guys have said about like the dinner and just hanging out and, and the, the smaller meeting. Everything. For me, the, the moment that stands out the most 
and this isn't by any means meant to be a, a pat myself on the back moment, but I walked around the corner to the uh, mythic meetup. And I see this, this taller gentleman there. And I was like, that's, that's Chris Johnson. Cause he's got his actual picture in his profile. Right. I know I'd you. never met him yeah. before. Like I was like, I recognize his face. Cause he had like commented on some stuff this past week. And he said he was going to be there. I was like, all right, I got to, I was like, I intentionally was like, all right, I'm going to try to remember him. Cause I have an actual picture with an actual name. And mm. I was like, You're Chris, right. And he's like, you know who I am. And it was just, <laughs> it was just, it was just this really cool moment. He was such a nice guy. He did this amazing piece of artwork for Jeremy that I think has been yeah, posted great, right all, mm. um, of Sir Gerard. And he just did this amazing stippling on it. And, and that was just really cool. And like seeing him, and um kirby uh kirby, yeah, kirby. and david mm -hmm. and the other guys that were kind of sitting at that table no. together was just really cool like how i think those were probably some of the guys you were talking about brian that you know yeah um, i didn't have a chance to meet chris but yeah like i've seen him a okay. few times like posting and commenting and things just like you said so it was just it was just cool to see them yeah they were a little more quiet it wasn't like you know that my wife is going to kill me or even curtis and i you know being a little more boisterous sometimes you know but it was just cool to see them and get to meet them and um just all the different folks like you guys said the, about coming up that didn't know what they were or mm -hmm. was there you know they just got into them in the last couple months and it was just really cool um overall and we haven't talked about them a lot but genuinely uh brett stoddart was kind of um I think Aunt Ange was MVP of of the, oh, yeah. the floor hall, like bringing mm -hmm. snacks around, mm -hmm. making oh, sure yeah. had water, you, treats, you know. Yeah. 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 But She's Brett Stoddart is my MVP for the weekend because without him, I wouldn't have made it out there. And he hauled me and all the Wolf King stuff out. Um, he drove both ways, you know, nonstop. Um, super, super easy to talk to. You know, really nice guy and. Um, it was just great to spend that time with him, get to hang out with him and uh, just had a great time and not worried about, you know, um, you know, ending up in, in a, in a salt pile, you know, in Detroit or something, because he knows where all the yeah. bodies uh, get hidden. So, yeah, yeah and that was, that was my big fear. Driving, I think. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Go ahead, driver. Not enough people talk about Brett Stoddard's driving, I that, think. In his that's true. <laughs> I heard he's um, a good driver. Yeah, that was my big fear of the weekend. Like, you know, I, I really hadn't spent much time with Brett before this. I knew he was bringing Jesse and we were going to be rooming together. And all I really know is from his photography. And while it is amazing, um, it also looks like a lot of good places to hide bodies. And so I was a little nervous about that going into the weekend, but after the weekend was done, I was like, man, I will hide a body with you anytime. Just let me know. So, um, he's got me on speed dial now. Um, he knows the places I can do some work. Um, so yeah, it, it, it'll, it'll work out great. So what you're saying is you wish you had Jesse's guy. There you go. There you, go. <laughs> you know, and I, I may, I may see him next weekend and I might show up at ToyCon on Saturday or Sunday next week. So who knows? And, and speaking of all the, the folks that you were mentioning, like Kirby, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you like what the conversation was because it was very personal, but um, uh, Kirby had a conversation with me um, after the mythic meetup where he pulled me aside to talk to me um, and just a genuine dude and, and made my whole weekend like, I, I was kind of running on fumes. Like, you know, we're four months out from Legion's con and, you know, I'm missing my friends and, you know, I don't have anybody really else around this area. So I was running on fumes, man. And this weekend really filled my bucket. Uh, mm -hmm. And I got like the motivation and energy to make it to Legion's con now. So I just super appreciate it. But yeah, Kirby, Kirby was awesome. And he, he definitely made my weekend. So appreciate it. If you're out there listening. Yeah. Not a great guy. Good people. Let's, yeah. So let's talk about some some hauls because while you know several of us were there selling, uh, we're we're also fans of this stuff too. So, um, what what'd you guys get? Anybody get anything good? So much. Oh, got a cape, huh? Got, well, hold on. This is hard to do. No. <laughs> yeah, it's you always reverse. Got some soft goods, okay. some matching soft goods. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and then I got this beauty. Oh, and this is hard. Oh, that's that's a uh, Eric Miller. Eric yes. Miller head. Yeah. yeah, picked up one of those too. It's incredible. Oh, wrong one. Uh, well, yeah, there, uh, there it is. Yeah, uh, that's, that's awesome. Cool. 
And I got one to. I got the female Jess oh, one. Oh yeah, the Jess. So there I you go. Try, we got to, Abigail. try to paint it. Excellent. Beautiful. Brian, did you have any pickups? Yeah, I, Travis took a lot of my money. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, every time he left the table, he came back with more well, stuff. I'm like, stop leaving the table. But I did learn something. When I leave the table, mm. I have a better chance of making sales. Right, Mel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every <laughs> I left the table like three times and he comes by. I'm like, hmm, I'm starting to see us. Okay, I'm starting to understand this. And yeah, I, I figured that out from Deshaw last year. Like, right. you leave the table and you let your significant other run it. And next thing you know, like, you're bringing in the bucks. Yeah. So, well, yeah, when I walked away sure. from my table and Curtis was watching it, I don't think any sales happened. No, so. I actually chased people away. I said, Jesse will be back soon. He's pooping. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing to do with that maniacal laughing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Which, I have I have my chart. I was talking about this at dinner last night. Uh, that was full donkey. This is my laughing chart. During dinner. Was, you definitely. Yeah, so you were you were giggle, snorting. You, yeah. Snort. Um, what is this one? We're just yeah, we're like a fall. Strong chuckle. Oh. Evil goblin. <laughs> uh, full donkey. Yeah. And, and then what's the last one? Death. Death by laughter. Yeah, right. we're like Jesse. Breathe, breathe, Jesse. <laughs> because surely you never go full donkey yeah don't yeah don't go full donkey so. you, you you heard full donkey well maybe you did but the, the rest of the people at dinner did yeah yes it was amazing it was a great time um nate what about you you pick up anything ah i did pretty good starting with yeah. i would go grab it but i'm blocked in here i got a beautiful cape by your beautiful wife which Sweet. i will be highlighting in some photos hopefully soon Thank you very much. I, yep, I picked up an Eric Miller hat. I picked up some things from Frank. Uh, One from Stephen Bashotti. You can't let him leave. Go. Yeah, he'll he'll make oh, mention of it. If you, yeah, West Lord for oh, that. Gotcha. Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure you didn't forget him because you'd never hear the end of it. So right, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if he watches yeah, this stuff. Great. <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff there. Beautiful. What about you, Mal? Anything you're bringing back besides the uh, what is it, the stone dars or, yeah, or whatever? Rock, yeah. uh, rock on, I forgot. Rock ons, yeah. yeah. Um, I couldn't remember which one it was. <laughs> yeah. I picked up a couple of capes off yourself, and a couple of heads off Wolf King, a couple of figures, and and that was it for me. I haven't got a lot of space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got to fit it in your bag. It, actually, uh, just so everybody knows, Mal actually had to leave some underwear at Nate's house so that he could fit all the stuff in his bag. So, hey, um, me too. So, uh, <laughs> you just yeah, need to have so Richard you. teach you how to pack stuff. That's all. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Trevor, anything? Yeah, I did some damage. Uh, <laughs> Frank, Frank got me like immediately when I walked in having a fury orc. I think that was strategically placed right at the front of the display. <laughs> yeah. So, I immediately said, I will take that. Uh, I came back and he uh, acquiesced on like a giant uh, green orc that he had put together. So I picked that up too. Uh, picked some props up at Dusty's place. Um, got a Lord Stephen head. <laughs> Coincidentally, the same Lord Stephen head that he got. Go figure. Yeah, uh, I know, right? Two, two. I got two capes from the lovely Darla Ackerman. Um, what else did I get? Uh, two heads from Eric Miller. Which is awesome, right. and yeah, uh, I think that's. Uh, and I and I won some stuff because uh, your number. Kevin Travis couldn't, couldn't stop calling the number twenty-five, so I, I had a bunch of stuff that I won. <laughs> well, Nate called it first. That's yeah. Nate called it because it's our birthday. It's it's both mm. our, May twenty-fifth is our birthday, so that's why he called it. There was no collusion there whatsoever. For nothing. sure, he yeah. Didn't know what number I had? I didn't signal yeah. it to him from across the room. I didn't even yeah. know there were numbers at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I never got a number. No. Uh, Jesse, what about you? You get anything cool? Um, I got one of those Mario, my wife is going to kill me posters. Mm, um, from Jeremy. Yep. Uh huh. I got, uh, I got, I, d I did a trade. So I got a Borier mm -hmm. from, Ooh. from okay. Steven. Um, uh, I got one of uh, Dusty's glow in the dark thrones um, that I'm going to add a little bit of paint and stuff too. So I'm going to give that to Baron Voliger so he mm. can just be up there, just exasperated with life and just sitting <laughs> in his chair. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I grabbed a heads pack from the horseman 
and I got a goblin from Nate. Cool. Um, what else? I don't know. I, I didn't get much else. Uh, I, I know. Oh, I got, I got, a, I got one of um, Brian's staffs. There it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, it's in the it? I haven't taken out of the box yet. I'm like, if I open this up before I get home, I'm never going to find it again. Um, <laughs> So I haven't unpacked it, but I'm excited to give it to uh, uh, the Ravenna, um, mm. uh, not one to one remake that I'm going to make. So, mm. cool. Pat- Patrick's intensifying. I said not one to one. It's just going to be different. <laughs> um, uh, I know one thing that you didn't get, Jesse. And that is uh, the Praetorian head that I was supposed to bring for you because that was in the bag of the parts that was for Dooch that he didn't oh, get. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm going to have to mail that to you. Just FYI. You don't have to mail it. Um, I So my whole goal was to really spend the first few months of the year putting my wife to work, um, making a bunch of capes giving her a bunch of different colors. So, that, you know, cause I don't want her to get complacent, like just doing one thing or something. So I gave her, a, I just kept like feeding her new colors and, you know, making her go to the store and buy new fabrics so that I could pay for my trip. Um, and you know, anything that I decided to buy and it, it worked out pretty well. Um, yeah. Wait, feeding her colors. What is she? Some sort of like silk moth or something. <laughs> I mean, she's able to turn it into some ma- magic stuff. So yeah. Oh, that's um, true. But yeah, I mean, the table did well, uh, sold a lot of cape. Actually, we sold probably as many capes at Mesquite Con as we did at Legion's Con. That being said, Legion's Con, we sold out, so we couldn't sell anymore. But just the fact that we sold that many, um, it 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 went really well. And I'm, you know, very appreciative of all the kind words and the pictures that people are sharing. Um, I, I love my wife's work. I get excited to see her involved in this stuff. Um, I actually did pick up her first figure for her um, because she had been asking me for a Ziri and I saw they had one at the table, you know, horseman prices. Um, So I picked that up for her. And I don't know if you guys saw, but she made a post in the cabal. I was taking a nap when I got home. Um, Like I was beat and I took a nap. And while I was taking a nap, she took a bunch of shots with Ziri, like in different displays that I have with different characters. She had them on my D20 bore. Like, <laughs> yeah, she did a lot of cool stuff. So, um, awesome. yeah, I'm really excited she got that. Um, and then we like, got- time's over. Get back to work. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gave her the weekend off. She played some World of Warcraft this weekend. Um, but, yeah, tomorrow's a new day. And, and we're, well, no. Actually, we're celebrating our St. Paddy's Day tomorrow because we didn't do it tonight because I was traveling. So tomorrow is Boondock Saints and uh, and Love that movie. Cabbage. Yeah. How are you going to um, watch Boondock Saints since you gave me both of your Boondock Saints movies? Because I stream everything now. Even when I had the oh, DVDs, right. I don't. I yeah, I'm just too lazy to grab them. So yeah. I forgot to mention Curtis unloaded a bunch of his unwanted DVDs on me. I did. <laughs> um, Including so, something called Stone Cold, which is not a wrestling thing. It is so good, man. I love that movie. <laughs> That's Brian Bosworth at his best. Um, oh, but, uh, I, man, I, I picked up, um, you know, Brian brought his his bots that I had purchased. I'm so excited to get into those. And as, listen, I love those bots. I think they're a genius idea. But the thing that I'm so excited for is all those parts, how they will plug into like the cosmic ports, because I can't wait to have like sentries with saws on their arms and drills on their arms and all this kind of crazy shit. Um, So, yeah, I'm super excited for that stuff. Um, I picked up a couple heads from Eric Miller as well. He, he did this one. Like, listen, Eric is fucking amazing. Like he does, he does such great work. He did this. He there's this one head that's like what we call the value heads in in Lens Collection, where they're like just like these five dollar heads, and there's not a whole lot of detail to it. I mean, it's 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 detailed enough, and it's a five dollar head. But Eric like went the extra mile and added details that aren't in the sculpt, like just by the way he painted it. And man, it's just fantastic. Like, you know. I, I've, I've heard it say that a, a good sculptor can make a, a painter look even better and vice versa. Man, I tell you what, that like Eric really just blew this thing away and, and it was so good. And, and just being able to hang out with him this weekend was cool. Um, so I got a couple of heads from him. Uh, I said I picked up that skull thing from Dusty. Um, 
obviously I got a couple things from the, the horseman table as well. Um, I think that, got a that quick might be about uh, it. super chat here from drunk gizmo, which we picked up a, a oh, diorama amazing. for him. Yeah. An amazing Lynn's double stable. And then some that's going to be in yeah. lens display. So anybody that goes to any of the, the East coast events where Wolf King's at, you're going to see uh, Alexander's display there. Um, we've we picked up a stable but we're not actually going to use it as a stable stay tuned um but we're excited for that but go it ahead sir. sorry unstable ah. no, and you know just want to you know we, we also we also have a bunch of carver and Ac mm -hmm. capes by ackerman you know in the wolf king displays so um mm -hmm. uh drunk is mo with a 499 super chat it was amazing hanging out with all of you amazing people yesterday slash last night definitely needed it love you guys right back at you uh, it was great. And with I want to pull this one up from Dusty because I wasn't going to say this because I didn't want people to get jealous, but Dusty said it. So, yes, I did get a poster from Dusty. So for those that didn't see, Dusty did this amazing uh, Furious 4 poster with the different heads of the Furious 4. It also has a little Cody cat down in the corner and stuff. And he did it like the, the cover, like the Queen cover with the Bohemian Rhapsody. And it's just fantastic. And he, you know, took a picture with the guys and everything and gave them one. And he had, he had an extra one that he um, offered me. Um, and it's, it's awesome, but I didn't, you know, I know he didn't make too many, so I didn't want to, you know, say it and like get people jealous, but yes, and Dusty, I really appreciate it. That was awesome. So he also had a print of his cosmic uh, or his, uh, his legions coloring book too, his cabal creations coloring book too with a cosmic theme, which he, he had, didn't get to do the full reveal for it, but it, the, the cover he, looked amazing. He showed us a couple pictures after dinner and man, it looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He showed us the, like the engineer, the science officer, the sentry. Yeah. Um, and we were yeah. talking to him about the, the cosmic wall tour and kind of what his ideas are for that. And man, I think as good as that mythic book is, I think that cosmic book might even be better. It's going to be cool. So That's stay amazing. tuned for that. I mean, it's a lot of work coloring book, right? And the cosmic colors. Yeah, it's just for sure. Yeah. 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 And, and I will also want to make mention on the uh, drug drunk gizmo customs table. Like he had a bunch of the, it wasn't just mythic like fountains and stuff. He had some cosmic stuff too, yeah, that looked cosmic. really oh. badass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some yeah. stuff with like different lights where with like remotes that you can change the color, you can have the colors like fading in and out and stuff. Yeah. Every time, um, every time I go to show and his stuff's there, it's just another level up. Yeah. yeah. Red death. Yeah. He's really killing cool it, man. Too. Yeah. I mean, it, it's oh, one yeah. of those things where he was already making a great product, mm -hmm. but he doesn't just can keep putting that same thing out. Like he tries yeah. to push himself and try new things. And, um, yeah, doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Curtis, me and you are twinning. You have to. Yeah, I know. We got our, our uh, my wife is gonna kill me shirts from uh, Matt Rodriguez. <laughs> so. That's the soft goods I was trying to to bring up earlier. So ah, I got gotcha. that. Yep. Yeah, Matt was there. Um, the he showed up two minutes before the con to run his table. Um, you know, <laughs> really, really put a lot into the setup. Uh, <laughs> so, but no, I had a good talk with him. Uh, sounds like things are going really well on his, uh, defenders of Eden line. Um, uh, you know, we should have those things, you know, within the next few months. Um, and he's already kind of talking about what's, you know, what's next, what's in store and how, how, you know, we do it going forward. So, uh, that line's going to be awesome. Um, can't wait for that. So. Cool. What else, cool. Jesse? Well, the uh, uh, Legions Lounge guys did their casting of Mythic Legions on mm -hmm. Monday night, mm -hmm. and I just I don't know if, if we can kind of rehash that a little bit with you guys. Is that okay? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, we're not we're not stealing your thing. We're doing it because you're here with no, us. No, 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 no. I know. I know. I, I'm just I'm, I'm worried about what's upcoming here. Uh, no, I, I, know, this I know literally you're upset just about Thistlethorn. I know you're upset. Wasn't about upset. Thistlethorn. I just thought we just see him clearly in a different way. And I got to bring it up with Jeremy last night. Um, he was in the, the room and I got a little, um, well, I think Maverick was hanging out with me and Jeremy. And I think Eric Miller was in there too. And we got to learn a little bit more about Thistlethorn. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm not saying I was right. I'm not saying you guys were right, but it was cool to hear what he had to say. But um, uh, I thought it would be fun to, to throw out some more, 
casting things. Um, yeah, hear it. Not, not to, again, not to steal from your thing. Um, they steal from so us I, all the time. It's, it's only fair no, for no, us to, no, you know, no. so. No. <laughs> Changing to 8 o'clock is not stealing from you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we moved up an hour. You moved up an hour, you know. We show I mean, photos, you show photos. Constantly happens on network television since the beginning of time. So <laughs> he's, he saw our shelf selections. He's like, I'm just going to make a whole show of this. I like this. Now, to be fair, shelf selections <laughs> came because on, on Legion's cast, they would talk about stuff they saw in the cabal, but it was a podcast. So you couldn't see any pictures. And then as I listened through Legion's cast, they stopped doing it. And I'm like, all right, let's add that to the show. Cause you know, it's a cool thing to help promote people. And they do better than we do with the photo bomb anyway. All right, just get to it. What are we doing? Come on. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I just. I don't know. I just thought you know. So you. So I just thought maybe maybe those of us in the in the chat with you guys could throw out some other suggestions for the ones you picked. So you did Thistlethorn. Yep. Atlas and Attila, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Delphina. Delphina. Lucretia. Lucretia, and Dubon. Yes. Dubon. Yeah. Okay. It was was it six seven. or seven? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember. I just know one. that I was mad because Trevor didn't pick anybody from Andor. And so I lost a figure on it because I bet it right from the bat. I'm like, he's going to have at least like three or four people from Andor, not a single one. And, and he listed like a hundred actors and didn't get one from Andor. So, okay. Good. Brian Stacy. Who would you pick for Delphina? Oh, actually, every, uh, Mal, Curtis, or Nate and Trevor. If you if you had to pick something different from what you picked Monday night, oh, who would you pick for Delphina? If you have if you have something different to to offer, you don't have to come up with one. Yeah, mm. I actually gonna... said because <laughs> we did have a little chat going on, and once you said Andor, I said I can't remember the actress's name, but Bix is that Bix? Mm. Would be Bix, I yep. think, uh, who played Bix would be pretty good for Delphine. Yeah, she could. Yeah. There you go. I, that would be, that would be good. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say uh, Jordan Fraser, be an excellent Delphina. Jordan <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, of well, the well, purple well, gang gang. Yeah, I think he could pull that off. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So Bix Any was other? Adria Aronha. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I can see her as yeah. Delphina. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, I thought Nate hit it first. Joke uh, on his pick. What was that, Brian? I thought Nate hit it perfect on his pick on the show. I, I forget what the lady's name. The one from uh, Knives Out. Yeah. Anna, Anna de Armas. Mm. Yeah, she's good too. Um, She's pretty. Stacy Mal, uh, any any other comments or thoughts I for don't Delphina? Pay attention to actresses anymore. That's okay. why I'm just going to name people from the Cabal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought a couple of their picks on the show for Delphina were really good. I can't remember who they were off the top of my head. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah. when they when they throw out twenty for one character, I mean, there's <laughs> bound to be one or two that are good. So. <laughs> Curtis inflicting his his own rules on everybody that oh never work, got stated. <laughs> All right, I I agree with the uh, um, the girl from uh, Andor, but my my first thought was uh, uh, Isa Gonzalez from uh, she was in the Kong versus Godzilla and uh, Baby Driver. Oh yeah. Okay. Can can I can I switch gears here and try and take this a little bit different direction? Um, yes, I mean, can I stop you? No, <laughs> so you know, we already kind of heard their casting. What, like, what I'm wondering is, like, because they, they listed some way different characters, what kind of story, based on the cast that they did, what kind of story okay. do you think goes with those characters? So, you had you, had, you got a you had a vampire, right? You got the the two boys, the the brothers. You got Thistlethorn, like, like, wh what kind of story are you guys imagining for those characters that they were casting? Are you talking to us? Sure, go I ahead. Didn't have a story in mind. I mean, we were just kind of picking some major characters and, you know, some interesting faction leaders, um, but, knowing their bios and 
Yeah, but yeah. like if, if it's just it's kind of like, like yeah. obviously we don't need a fully detailed storyline, but like just kind of an idea of what like if you cast those and then you'd want to see them in a movie, like what kind of thing would you want to see? Well, I you want you know you want to see the two brothers kind of you know fight it out either verbally or mm -hmm. physically. Yeah, uh, I thought that was the only reason I thought the two uh, Hemsworth brothers would be cool to actually see them mm. uh, as brothers. Mm -hmm. right now. But I think I think our other castings for those, especially what I think what Nate came up with um, was uh, Reacher and Havel. More mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like those guys. But uh, I don't know that uh, I think I thought Thistlethorn is an interesting character because of his his kind of historical bent on things. And then he's little this little goblin dude. And, you know, he could be an interesting character to uh cast i don't know i mean story-wise i don't know i don't know i mean you'd need more of the the forest folk i guess to uh xylona's flock to to bring him into it but he could be he could be you know being the messenger to tell everybody that the aether blade is missing or something like that and, gotcha so yeah. so like maybe the two brothers each fighting with a hammer and the hammers hit each other and one of them shatters and that's the fake one and the other one's the real one Ooh, maybe yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I like to put a twist on that hammer concept that he's okay. got a fake one, but it's not out of like pride or arrogance to, you know, deceive people. It's this is what everybody's rallying on. I've got people out looking for the real one. I've got to have the it's real a symbol of hope. It's like the it's, it's the symbol for his yeah. faction. The, the, the party was trying to impress women, <laughs> lost his hammer. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place he's he's no atlas he knows it he can't right and you know and he didn't run out and abandon everybody okay to go play in the forest and then with the bears see, this is exactly what i wanted to happen i want to <laughs> i want to see the the americans and english fight that's what i'm like <laughs> my freedom's intensifying <laughs> are coming. Are coming. I already beat the man at every uh, English pub sport there is, uh, except <laughs> snooker because we didn't have a snooker table. So didn't they beat you at the Legion's <laughs> Lord trivia contest? Though that's true, they did crush you at the trivia. That was not Mythic Legion's trivia. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, oh, what, what is this show about to turn into? <laughs> I saw you guys doing some some games. I was like, I was like, man, these guys are playing shuffleboard. How old are they? Um, <laughs> man, it's like, like you guys went on a carnival cruise or something. <laughs> I just know I will be intolerable oh, if I ever play darts with any. I'm not good, but every time I do it, I'm gonna do that barbecue sauce. <laughs> from, uh, All right, Ted Lasso. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But just miss the board completely. It goes into yeah, the wall. Yeah, just gonna get stuck in someone's <laughs> leg or well, someone's beer as the waitress walks by. Makes, um. Makes so what, any, anybody up. else, and it doesn't have to be with their casting, but if if there was a Mythic Legion movie, like what what kind of storyline would you be interested in? Are are you looking for something with comedy, action, just like an epic? type movie or or um some sort of suspense like what, what kind of thing would you guys be looking for in a in a legions movie i mean i like serious fantasy but i mean you gotta have a little bit of humor in there i, I don't right. think the levels of like you like know the avengers movies the early avengers movies not mm -hmm. the stuff but uh you know a little bit of i mean there's there's plenty of characters that could be those humorous i mean you know thistlethorn could be one of those jesse yeah. i don't know if you feel the same way but uh, he's a serious character, but he could be kind of cute and have have a weird little voice or something like that, and it could be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean serious. I want I want some serious. I want Lord of the Rings level yeah. fantasy. Mm -hmm. right. so, yeah. Sweeping landscapes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Would you want it to be a you know like t retelling the the story or you know more Dungeons and Dragons like where it can be you know like a heist movie set in the world of mythos or you know like a subplot you know do you want it to be the the main characters or background characters playing amongst the drama of the big story? Oh no, I think you got to do Game of Thrones. You got to have the main main characters being the, okay. the, the thrust. But I think it's going to be one of those things like Game of Thrones, off. right? Yeah, like Game of Thrones. Like there's going to be that many characters to keep track of that you're going to have to jump from one thing to the next in in either. So you can I, have... It's probably more of a mini series or like a regular. Well, that's yeah. Series. Chris here said it has to be a trilogy at the very least, oh, yeah. And, yeah. and I think there's no guarantee if you do a movie that you're going to get two more movies. So I think yeah, a series might be a would probably be a better way to kind of get some of that story out and 
you know, without yeah, it being feeling really rushed. Blade being the, the, the thrust of it, though, that whole, that's the MacGuffin is the Aether Blade. Mm. Obviously it is. It's what brings back the, the four. So uh, you see, I feel like at least you'd have to there. perhaps have a time jump between three movies and cover a bit over here, a bit here and a bit here. Because um, I think you want the, um, I forget what the meeting was called again. Mm -hmm. Oh, Coven in the Shadows. Because I can imagine that being so atmospheric and oh and yeah, dark and you know. Oh yeah, that one like little that. part would be super cool. Yeah, just to see them, you know, talking about their plans and stuff. Yeah, and Whatever kind of movie, kind of distrusting one another and yeah. yeah. Whatever the movie is, though, I want Mel and the uh, the to be the trailer voiceover. Oh yeah, yeah. The the world. world. He's the guy who yeah. talks about Helios and right. and like the the. Who, who did you want to do that voiceover? Malcolm. Mal. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, maybe even some like narrating between between right. scenes and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, he's he's one of the scribes or or the wizards of uh, of the convocation of Basilia. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like reading the story from the scrolls right. to yeah. the next generation. Yeah, yeah. before the world yeah. as we knew it. Yeah. I think <laughs> I'm gonna throw this out there. I think a Mythic Legions animated series on the level of animation of like Blue Eye Samurai or Arcane or oh, something like that. Arcane level would be incredible. I, I mean, honestly, we're, we're, you know, we did the casting thing and it's, I mean, if, if anything comes about, I mean, I'm assuming it's probably going to be like some sort of animation. I mean, yeah. You get season one is like the build up to the return of Aerithir. Air, you know, the, the season mm -hmm. one ends with him returning. Season two is the rest of the dark four coming back season mm -hmm. three is that second dark war you know and then mm -hmm. four is where and that would be about where we're at with the figure line at this point yep. yeah it'd be kind of cool to see it like some but one of the studios that did one of the short stories for like love death and robots some mm -hmm. of those animations oh yeah cool. oh yeah some great seeing that seeing yeah. like mythos in that style would be amazing Heck yeah. yeah i mean the one you know my, one of my favorite properties is is masters of the universe and um, I absolutely hated the the 87 movie, but I get it to do that as a live action series. I mean, our li live action movie would cost a ton of money. Um, so, yeah, I think if if like Four Horsemen were going to do some the animation definitely makes sense because you could do those big scenic shots and all this kind of stuff without you know, having to break the budget to film oh. that kind of thing. Can you imagine um, getting Nate March, Nate March. Oh, come man. to life? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for the opening sequence or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd yeah, be kind really of like awesome. one of those old like Disney fairy tale. You know, it's like the book. You know, comes in and like it goes from like that painterly look into the more defined mm -hmm. CG or whatever animation they do. Yeah, yeah, that'd be so cool. And you could do like you could do since there are so many like side stories and stuff. You could do like uh you know different animation studios doing like a little side story kind of like the uh, star wars visions you know to tell mm -hmm. like, yeah uh, you know because there's well, so like, many characters you know like yeah. how they did the like the the little mini short for adam eve tying into invincible you get a little more of her backstory right mm -hmm. so we need to find out a little bit more about what's going on with artemis instead of spending three episodes intercutting her backstory here's mm -hmm. You know, right yeah. Like, yeah her parents being killed or something like that would, yeah. that would be a cool story you know what I mean? yeah like the the one that that i really love is is queen Urxa because i just to me if there's any race that was going to be like super male dominated and misogynistic it would be the orcs so to have a female leader of the orcs tells me she's a freaking badass like she's got she's got some sort of cool story there and i would just love to see that kind of baked out a little bit yeah. Um, I'm and hoping would, we get some of that in Jeremy's book, but yeah, seeing that on a screen would be really cool. And I would love uh, if Queen Urxa was voiced by uh, Stephen Buscemi. <laughs> oh, uh, <good> <laughs> yeah, he'd be very happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> tell him, tell him he's voicing the alpha. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> I'm playing a girl. Uh, Joe Vasopolo says animation. Okay. Hand drawn or digital rotoscope a la uh, fire and ice and rotoscopes a little dated. I think at this point, hmm. um, I'm going to lean into the, my, my thought of like arcane or yeah, even yeah, like yeah. the yeah. later seasons of clone wars where it looks handmade on CG, like, uh, uh even mm -hmm. blue eye samurai, I think something mm -hmm. where they blue eye samurai, the way they do some of those camera tracking shots, it yeah. feels cinematic. It's not just static hand-drawn animation it's beautifully designed yeah. but I mean, it, it's like vox machina you know what i mean like i mean because i think i think arcane is an expensive thing to make that's some there's oh, a sure. lot of detail there mm -hmm. but uh even the way they did vox machina i like a lot i think that could work mm -hmm. too. yeah I, I like 
like the thing I really loved about um, Blue, I mean, I love the story of Blue Samurai and just the characters they built and stuff. But as far as like the animation, um, and I think I heard somebody, somebody else was saying this, maybe it was Jeremy, um, that it, it like after like 10, 15 minutes, it didn't even feel like you're watching an animated show. Like yeah, it, right. it's, it's just done so well. And the story is like sucks you in so much. And the animation is so good that you almost forget you're watching an animated series. Yeah. It's just you a know? well-written story. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what has to happen with, with something like this for sure. Mm -hmm. But I will say going back to the rotoscoping and fire and ice, I would love to see like, if we did one of those side things, like somebody try and do it in the style of Ralph Bakshi or something, you know what I mean? Like just like that retro style. Like, I would love to see a, a at least a trailer made like that. Yeah, like yeah, one of yeah. Emil's trailers, um, yes. <laughs> but in the Bakshi style. I tell you, I tell you what I would love to see is like the, the Necronominus, like, just that that faction and and like especially like morgolith and her brothers um and then you know maybe some other skeletons in the background in like the ray harry housing style like the very choppy like See, that would be cool too yeah, yeah. The different side stories being a different art style all That's together amazing. yeah, yeah. That'd be so amazing. Yeah. Would be amazing yeah and, and i just cool. stop motion how cool would that be Stop motion skeletons oh. would be awesome. Like that's, that's how I see skeletons is the stop motion. Yeah. Right. Like using the myth and that's what I'm saying. To do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, Jeff just said that too. Um I, I think there's in my mind when I think about like the, the, the congregation of Necronomus coming together in some giant creepy ass cathedral type structure that's all bone, because that's isn't that their their place is called like the the house of blessed bone or something like that. Yeah. Like their main mm -hmm. fortress or something. Mm -hmm. So that, I just imagine the bull's what, house is called the what? <laughs> is that what the bull's house is called? Um, <laughs> Rob Zamora here says the blue samurai was done with real actors wearing the, the suits and the 3d golf ball things. I didn't, oh, I wow. didn't realize Okay. That. So that they did That's it like, like the like volume game like avatar. Yeah. Motion, yeah. motion capture. Because I was gonna wonder, because they do like camera pans, like it's real space, and that's hard to do in animation. Yeah. yeah. Um. But you you see them all in there, you know, in Morgolith, or even when Necronominus comes back, and you hear instead of like hearing like a, a loud thunderous roar, like the orcs at you know the Urukai Isengard, you just hear like the clatter of like the bones and the weapons, and there's like no voices, just being super creepy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just. Yeah awesome but you gotta you gotta admit like seeing um uh oh crap wow i just blanked on his name the one with the blow gun the, yeah seeing oh, his, uh, that uh, animation yeah. would be great yeah yeah Stabular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah without ornate he is you now. could even do like a little side side noble bear christmas story like in this in the route rank and bass style or something like that <laughs> yes yeah, i'm down with that. sliding down on the snow on his butt drinking <laughs> it's all it's all quiet it's all about uh bodvar the bear you know like finding like yeah, some child in the snow side, or something side story right yeah yeah like uh i was like the snowman animals. or whatever yeah yeah one, exactly. one of my all favorite there. Like one of my favorite Christmas ones is the the Masters of the Universe one because like Skeletor actually like you know he he like basically falls in love with this puppy and he like he likes change like he's not he's not Aww. like as evil like he warms up and stuff. I think yeah, I would love to see like a like a Father Christmas like convincing Krampus that you know you don't have to like beat children. <laughs> Or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Funny you mention a, a Christmas story because one of the things we were going to try try and do on the show was a, a Mythic Legion's Christmas story. <laughs> we, did, we did manage to get it done in the end, but also <laughs> Rich yeah. has issues. They, it was violent. <laughs> so we, yeah. Maybe turn it down a little bit. It's Christmas. Um, <laughs> well, now just, mentioned... just a little piece of advice, though, Mal. Like if you got ideas on things you're going to do, I probably not say it in front of Trevor because there's a good chance that I'll, show up. I'll show up on the lounge before you guys get to it. So. But now I just want to see like, like I think sons of the red star should be threatening and intimidating, but there's almost like a Skeletor vibe to cast uh, or scapular mm -hmm. where like, if he's using that blow gun, mm -hmm. just one of his like henchmen's like, how do you even do that? You know, like, <laughs> you don't have yeah. any lips. You yeah. Any lungs. <laughs> That would be a funny. That would be like a funny side. A side. It's like a little gag yeah. that and he's like, like and just later you see him do something. Someone's like, "How does he do that?" Just yeah. sit there and see a guy. Like, oh. 
How? <laughs> it's like the, uh, you know, where we're going, we don't need roads. In, in Mythos, you don't need lips, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can kiss with Adam. We've, they've already proven that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not canon. Not canon. <laughs> Not canon. But it happens. <laughs> and it's out there. Alternate universe. It's in our memories. <laughs> um, well, just just kind of getting out. We're closing in the two hour mark and just to kind of get back to the, the Mesquite Con, um, you know, great time. Th those that attended, we appreciate it. It was it was just a blast. The meetup was great. The dinners were great. Um, for those that didn't attend, if you can make it, please make it next year, because I, I'd love to see this thing just keep growing. Um, you know, for me, like I said, it's that midway point where, you know, kind of fills up my fills up my bucket a little bit. But yeah. um, Nate, as the uh, the resident Michigan guy, um, what, what are some besides the convention, besides the things that we've talked about? What are some things that uh, would make people want to come see Michigan? Well, I keep saying I love Muskecon. The only thing I would change is move it to the summer. Because the west coast of Michigan, summertime mm -hmm. is amazing. Uh, Lake Michigan's incredible. The beaches are incredible. And uh, Malcolm and Trevor just got to try Coney Dogs for the first time today. Nice. Nice. Yeah, hey, I mean. You live it, in New York and you've never had a Coney Dog? It's different, though. It's different. Oh. Different Coney yeah. Dogs. Yeah, I think it's, it's, they took it sort of from there, but I don't think it's the same time. Okay. I yeah. never heard that. No, um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that, Nate. Like, I think if it was like May or June where it was more that like six months out from the past Legion's con six months to the next one would be better timing. Um, but you know, really that's, you know, Pete, Pete's got to figure that out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, mean, I think that would be cool. Good, people, good Midwestern people here, man. Like mm -hmm. you said, very welcoming, amazing hats. Great hats, salt yes. piles, best hats. Salt piles. I would check yeah. that. Like, guarantee that hat was like made in China or like the Philippines or something. It probably was. I don't know. Well, yeah. The important question is, what did Darla think of the hat? Oh, is, is she. She goes. <laughs> um, I come home and she goes, "What does somebody pay for something like that?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "One cape." <laughs> that's why you took a nap and she played warcraft yeah <laughs> doghouse for wearing that hat home yeah there you go um i i will say you know i i you know i would be remiss if i didn't thank uh steven bashotti for letting me stay at his house thursday night um his lovely family uh welcomed me in let me kind of stay there so that i didn't have to drive in on friday and immediately go into setup um, and if you ever get the oh, chance yeah. to hang out with Steven and, and, and stay the night at his house, he makes an amazing breakfast. Um, his family is awesome and he's not nearly the alpha that he acts on the show. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out. Said, he was Spoiler alert. in making a meal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I will like, I, I gifted him a, um, a poster it's like a frame poster of this um motu um oil painting um and uh he brought it in the house and put it on the mantle in the living room and uh then was promptly told to take it down um so so he did um so there, there you go a uh, little bit of insight. And then uh, we did not go see the water treatment plant this time, but he did take me by some sort of sewage thing that he was talking about how there's these machines underground that lift the sewage up and then that way it can gravity feed down I, it, it was a whole thing and I, I didn't really catch it all um but yeah if you go hang out with steven you can hear about sewage um and see that he's not truly an alpha you're so. really selling it curtis <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So for those of you who wanted a reason not to go to MesquiteCon next year. Well, that's just a reason not to maybe hang out with Steven. But <laughs> One of, He's uh, just trying to save all the, the breakfast food for himself by telling everybody not to go. His breakfast is amazing, man. He makes, a, he makes a mean breakfast. If he ran a bed and breakfast, they would sell it just for, for the breakfast. So, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I can't picture that story playing out. Bushotty bed and breakfast. Yeah. 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 Breakfast. yeah. That would work. So 
Cool. Well, what what else, folks? Any any closing thoughts on uh, on the event this weekend, or hanging out with the horsemen, or or anything else? Shout out to Brad Jones too for that. We had a great time going to, to lunch and dinner with him and, and yeah, fucking choky, fucking choky. Who knows what they yeah. don't know? Yeah, great. It was Mark. cool seeing the Ohio boys come in. Uh, not only Casper and and Jones, but also Immortal Collections surprising everybody and just oh, showing yeah. up out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. The whole family. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. brought the whole family in. They had they yeah, they made an event of it. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. Yep. Corey showed up and like, gave Carlo. out heads to people. Mm. Yeah, oh, Jesse, heads, sculpted heads from Corey. Oh, speaking of sculpted heads, we had the the and mythic meetup head that, that, that Stephen did the skulls. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, those were awesome. Like they had a an open open mouth one, a closed mouth one. I think the closed mouth one actually looks scarier. He's got like this creepy grin about him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Stephen did a great job uh, sculpting those, and uh, that was just a nice little giveaway for those that showed up. That was yeah. cool. Very and cool. shout out to Maverick for paying for the first fifty. Yeah, 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 yeah which I thought was like just the, yeah, it was like a joke, but he actually did. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> High five, Mav. Yeah. Yep. He also does um donated a custom to, for the giveaway. Yeah. That's yeah. right. There was a lot of donations though. I mean, everybody was very generous and stuff. It was it was cool. Yeah. So I got a slightly dented um unknown one Bob and from Travis without the skirt, which was cool. Do you mean an unconed one? The oh, mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> Very nice. Cool. Well, let's go around the bottom here. Um, Brian, Stacy, where can folks, other than your, uh, where, where to go? I posted earlier the the Carver Customs on Instagram. Yep. Um, you got any other shows coming up before Legion's Con that you might be hitting up? Not that I know right now. Um, okay. She's been she's been doing a lot of stuff on the Legion's Ladies. I run the Legion's Ladies Instagram page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So make sure you give that a follow. And did I hear you're going to be on the I, show soon? I think so. Not okay. confirmed yet, but I okay. think so. And if cool. I am, there might be a giveaway. Nice. Mm. Very nice. Excellent. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. We'll definitely see you at Legion's Con. Of, of course. course. Yeah. 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 And you don't miss a question. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, and, hopefully and, intern. Yeah, and and I oh, just yeah. personally want to say I appreciate you guys uh, popping in. You know, uh, often in the customizing studio. Um, you know, j for for me, it's just being able to hang out with folks and be creative every week um, encourages me to not fall into like a rut where I don't do that stuff for a while. Um, so yeah, seeing folks like you guys in there and, and just having fun and chatting and working on that stuff has been cool. So thank you. Yeah. Um, there's something else that I'm kind of working on that might also help people be a little bit more encouraged to be creative in the realm of legions. Ooh, so nice. it's still a work in progress with a couple friends, but yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Well, we look oh, forward to that. that. Mm. Nice. All right. That sounds exciting. Can't wait to hear more. Mm hmm. Nate, how about you? Anywhere we can see you next, or is it Legion's Con? As far as going to, to cons, the rest of the yeah. Year? Or um, I mean, obviously you got Legion's Lair or Lounge. Sorry, that was not intentional. Legion's Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Too many L's. <laughs> Legion's Lounge uh, at Corona Four on Instagram, and I'm in the Cabal quite a bit, so. We we are waiting for that uh, Thistlethorn Granamere mashup. So um, yeah, it's, you know, it's whenever you can get that together, and if you could throw a little Superman and Indiana Jones in there, that wouldn't be bad too. Somehow, no sweat. Work them in. Yeah. Just remember, he asked for the Indiana Jones, not me. Put a Darla cape <laughs> and, and the boots. Yeah. There you and go. Don't forget the torches. I'm just and, saying. cheap. Clothes. And Jesse oh, loves satchel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yes. Yeah. So if you can get like a Croto satchel in there somehow, that would that would be awesome like, for Jesse. Yeah. Carver torches and fire effects for sure. Absolutely, mm -hmm. must have. So, maybe a fountain. Right. Yeah. Get Mal a coloring book in the background, you know. <laughs> yeah, the you yeah. Um, it'll be Legion's Con in terms of in person. Uh, otherwise, I am one third of the Euro Legion's podcast. Thank you. Some would say at least third, lesser third, but yeah. No I way. just turn up and do my thing. Um, and yeah, you can hear that every 
Friday <laughs> on any good podcast platform. Or join the Patreon. Or join the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Patreon's <laughs> worth it, for sure. Yeah, I, the, I mean, I will say there's a lot of Patreons that I um, I um, gift to um, that don't really do anything. Podcasters of the Universe. Uh, my wife is going to kill me. Um, but uh, the Euro Legions one is definitely worth it. Um, they they do giveaways. They've got they've already got several uh, Patreon episodes out that are really good. Um, oh, and and <laughs> yeah, and they've got a Discord, which I mean, I was the biggest hater of Discord ever. Um, but their Discord's actually a really cool. They've got it set up well to where they've got you know different categories for everything. Um, including other toy lines and how you have your display set up and and just photography and all all kinds of stuff. It's just a lot of fun. There's a, there's a quite a bit of interaction in there. So um, I, I would say that you know out of all the Patreons that I contribute to, the Euro Legions is definitely the one that I get the most benefit out of. So thank you, yeah, thank you. There you go. Trevor, Trevor anything? <laughs> uh, you know, Legions Lounge. Uh, we'll be starting the pop and swap stars uh contest pretty soon we're a little bit behind on that but uh, that'll be coming up soon so look for details on that and follow me on ig16 underscore shooter for probably not a whole lot for the next month because i'll be shooting mythic legions uh for uh yeah for quite a while so uh you know but okay. you can look at the old stuff it's good it's still good go way back yes. don't go too far back but it's you know enjoy. <laughs> yeah and you gotta and go all... back so you can see the progress yeah, no, 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 no. not too far back. <laughs> and and all jokes aside, uh, Trevor's photo bomb show is definitely the best thing oh, yeah. on YouTube. Um, you know that he he has guests on there each month that that are also very accomplished photographers. And you know, if if nothing else, if you just watch that show and pick up like follow the Instagram accounts that they go over, like all of a sudden your Instagram feed gets. Um, you know, massively better in terms of just cool factor. You know, you're just going to see toys and photography and cool stuff all day long when you go to Instagram instead of, you know, whatever stuff that they're trying to sell you or sponsor or whatever. So, um, yeah, it's, all yeah. it's all good. And uh, we got great people, I guess. <coughs> Kill Cutter Photo. I think you've had his some of his stuff on. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he does great work. He's going to be on with me. Uh, Chuck. On Chuck. Yep. In April. Early April. Cool. Awesome. Nice. Beautiful. Cool. Um, I, I did have one plug, Jesse, if you don't mind, before we close out the show. Sure. Um, Wolf King Customs, who Jesse and I both are, um, you know, very good friends with. Um, they're running a site-wide sale right now, 15% off of everything. Um, and uh, there's a, a code in there. Was it the, the codes for the 15% of the codes for the free shipping? So. Uh, yeah, if you I look know, at like, the, the social like, media yeah. platforms and stuff, I think it might even be on the homepage. Uh, I think it's free shipping and it is the gotcha. discount. And I think the um, code is just Wolf Den. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, he dropped a bunch of new parts. I think it was like something like 15 or 20 new parts on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of cool new stuff in there um, as well as all the, the older stuff. Um, so yeah, make sure you take advantage of that because it's, it's a really good sale. So yeah, some of the stuff folks saw, like the uh, the brute orc, brute orc shaman head that we had on display at Zolocon mm -hmm. and Mystikon, that's finally available in the shop. The the cursed wizards Which hat. You did an amazing job on that. Like the the. Well, that's job. not that one. Oh, is that the, that's not the one that you put on the the on the nope. Tharnog? What was that one? Nope. That one's the Beastmaster uh, Korgquin. Uh, it, on the site, it's listed as a dwarf orc. Uh, it's by uh, Jason Rodriguez. Uh, gotcha. The brute orc shaman uh, was on the the one shelf off to the side. It has like all the feathers coming out. It's got the big jaw. It's a pretty wicked looking orc. So can you post a picture? I don't know if you already have in the cabal on that one that you put on Tharnog because it. I mean, it looked perfect. I did. I okay. Did. Gotcha. Well, it, it was... the whole the whole setup I put posted with a picture of it in oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that one I think. I mean, you paint matched it well. You paint matched it before you even had the Tharnog, which is impressive. <laughs> Um, but then you put it on there and it's also just sized like perfectly because well, that's you. that brute scale is kind of a, a different size. So some heads look a little bit too small. Some heads look a little bit too big. Um, but man, that looks that looks awesome. So and this head was that head. The Beastmaster head was designed for a 1.0 size. So gotcha. Cool. 
yeah so yeah wolfkingcustoms.com for beautiful for that yeah well, there you go <laughs> we're at the two hour mark any any other closing thoughts from anybody on the con or anything else just my hat great seeing you guys great hanging with you guys yeah thanks for having us on yeah. Yeah. thanks yeah. for joining in and the thoughts on the hat love it thank you thank you stacy i appreciate it mm-hmm. be free curtis be free mal mal what do you think is this something you would sport over there across the pond um <laughs> I think you can meet up and wear something like that. I think you can't wait to announce a lifestyle change for sure. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay. All right. I, I was told that I was some uh, some dreads and some shades away from Rob Zombie. Um, mm. I was told that uh, I was pulling off the Chris Rock, and um, earlier Bob today Bob. I was told that I was yeah Boss Hog from <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna get them Duke boys. Oh, here we go. Get your out. And you got Jesse. Oh, there it is. Oh, are we going to get short? <laughs> there it is. Uh, All right, oh, folks. Goodness. We appreciate you jumping on. I know everybody had a lot of travel today, and, and everybody's probably really tired. So thanks for jumping on and just kind of talking about the event. Uh, it was cool hanging out with you there, and it was cool hanging out with you here. So really appreciate it. We're going to put you backstage, uh, talk about next week's show, and close it out. If you have to go, we understand. If not, hang out, and we'll be right back with you, okay? Cool. Okay. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so make sure you go check out Carver Customs on Instagram, Corona4, Euro Legions Podcast, and One Six Shooter on Instagram, or uh, uh, some of those things have their YouTube channels and all that. Um, and follow those awesome people for when they've got more stuff coming. Just, just great people, man. Yes. So good. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, we know we started an hour late tonight. Uh, we'll be back on regular time next week, eight o'clock. Yep. And next week we have a very special guest. We do. Um, as long as they, as long as he confirms that he's still good for next week. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, Chris Garch of D13 and uh, Four Horsemen Studios is coming on to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about some D13 and and some other stuff. You know, just get to know Chris a little better um maybe uh we'll get some good information out of him um you know since he's not going to be bouncing off of george or maybe we can get george to go hang out at his house while we do the show yeah Uh, and if if you think that purple gang gang live is the only wild and unpredictable show that there is tune in next week because i i bet it's going to get crazy just saying you never know you never know so So, yeah next week (laughs) sunday night goes as we apologize at a time (laughs) Don't worry, Joe. We're not specifically having him on as a representative of Four Horsemen. We will talk some Four Horsemen stuff, but we want to kind of give him a, you know, we're, I feel like we're, I don't know when the D13 is coming out, but it should be sometime this year. So hopefully he'll have on some the horizon. Yep. more info and it's getting close to Easter time. So we thought it'd be a good time to talk about some biblical adventures. So beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Anything else from you, Curtis? Man, it was just a great weekend, and it was, you know, I've talked about all the other people, but Jesse, it was great hanging out with you. It was, you know, I know it was supposed to kind of, initially it was supposed to be like a whole off-world um, weekend, and the other guys weren't able to attend, but it was it was good being able to see you and hanging out, and um, yeah, it was awesome. So, thank yes. you. Yes, thank you for inviting and, and making sure this all happened and, and everything, so I had a blast hanging out with you. As well, I'm just glad you didn't have that hat at the show. Right, I don't know if next that, year, you know, just because everybody would have just been talking about your hat and you know not the Wolf King stuff. So, um, after the show, drop a comment here. Let me know if you want me to wear the hat the rest of the season. So, just a simple yes, I would or no, I wouldn't. Um, yeah, throw it, throw it in the comments because uh, if you guys tell me yes to wear it the rest of the season, I will wear it on each episode for the rest of the season all right curtis ackerman living proof peer pressure does exist (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all right everybody thank you so much for joining us um where what am i looking for here curtis um yeah because until next time tell them shooting the shelf sent you 
I'm just kidding. What's on your shelf? <laughs> Oh!